Well, hello and welcome back, everybody. <laughs> My name is Jeremy. I'm Jeff. Welcome, and guys. Today we are uh, bringing you a, a very special guest, somebody here that I've known for just long enough to understand that he is one of us. And today, from CFT Performance Incorporated, uh, I'd like to welcome Mr. Joshua Chapman to the room. So, uh, without a whole lot of applause, we'll give you what we got. And oh, I could okay. press the the laugh or the <laughs> that, the clap button on here, but I don't like that. I feel like we're on the set of a sitcom or something, you know. But uh, anyway, Josh, thank you for coming, man. Uh, thanks yeah, man, for thank having you. me. Like this is awesome. No, no, I mean it, no, it is awesome. It's very awesome on many fronts. Um, it, and for us, I think it's it's really awesome that we have such quality people, yourself included, in our area that can actually be here and live with us. Yes. And the reason I say that is because what y'all are going to get to know about this individual is that he has got a lot of history, um, both as a civilian, as a military man, um, as a business owner, as uh, as a patriot, as a, as a citizen. He's done all the things. He's checked all the boxes that we all think that we should be checking in order to be happy. So today we're here to find out if what you've done has made you happy. <laughs> and if not, well, how do you fill do in those you gaps? Doing it? I know. Yeah. Why do you keep going? Yeah, absolutely. It, if, if you don't like the path you're on, then what are you doing? And I got a feeling that you really enjoy what you're doing because your customer base is very loyal. Oh, definitely. So, yeah. I, I mean, I can only hope to one day have a customer base that is of the same vein and the same depth and breadth, you know, so just know that we're watching from a distance, and we enjoy watching it. So. I think you're way bigger than I am, to Oh, be honest. I don't think no, – You've got no, subscriptions. You've got people <laughs> ordering monthly, monthly. Yeah, I'm yeah, one of it's them. It's 25 you bucks. Yeah. I, I hope you don't need people in subscription to parts. <laughs> well, you know, I could see something where it'd be like, hey, you can be a subscription member, and every month you get a part – and every month it's going to be at least worth the value, but some months it's going to be worth two or three times. Yeah. But it's just the next part. It's, it, 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 I could see, like, having been in a, a so gear like a Lego set that, you know, eventually you get it all, then you have, like, a complete vehicle. It is, yeah. but the Lego pieces <laughs> that he sells are individually complete. We do a lot of revisions. And that's well, I know what, you do. It, I was just watching a video yeah. of yours the other day about some revisions yeah. that you're making for the XD. Yeah. Or that you made. And that's what usually I think that's where my customers would be like, yeah, I need a subscription service for your revisions because as time goes on and we keep on building better and better, get better equipment, better machinery, we're able to drop the prices because something that used to cost us hundreds of dollars to build a part, if we had a third party out and so forth like that, mm -hmm. now we're starting to get it in-house and it's like, oh, it doesn't cost right. anything. So now it's like, I can do this revision. Well, I can make this better. So those revisions, and for those of the people out there in listener land and viewer land that don't know, um, could you please let the people know what it is that you're making? And and, and we don't have to get into the weeds, but, you yeah. know. So. Uh, I run a custom fabrication shop. So with yep. that being said is uh, the basis of my shop is really about automobiles. So we have product line of multiple different trucks mainly stuff in the diesel world so work with a lot of different diesels we started out two-car garage doing eco diesels and that's what started the whole company huh. and next thing you know it, it just took off nobody else was really making those parts right so ran with it and i just looked at the old lady i was like i think we can make a living doing this yeah, and yeah. she's like go for it she's the reason i'm doing it she gave me her credit card to buy equipment yeah wow. so that's amazing yeah. man i mean and you don't find that kind of a relation no. kind of a, a partnership yeah. very often yeah. because a lot of times that leads to resentment judgment oh anger like what if it doesn't work out oh. or what if it does even you might get somebody that's resentful because you use their money to go and build something for you yeah. money's exactly. the root of all problems it is it, is. it really is so yeah. you're still making it work so yeah, good that, it, it's done nothing but made Tara and I's relationship stronger has it from awesome. the, from the get go i mean like everybody's going to have their little nitpicks and uh -huh. their problems and stuff but to really to be honest this if you're going to start a business it doesn't matter what it is yeah. any business you get an idea and you're like this could be my new livelihood this could be our livelihood yeah there's a lot of stress. You know that. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of stress that's involved in it. Totally, yeah. So you're either going to, well, what are you going to do with stress? You're either going to make it work or yeah. you're going to just crumble apart on it. Yeah. So. Yeah, totally. It's, we've just became stronger. Our foundation's been stronger. The, Good. Every, the structures of it has all just been stronger. And I've never been happier, to be honest. So you're saying that the foundation is more stable than it's ever been because of where you came from. Oh, definitely. Makes definitely. sense to me. 
I mean, it, <laughs> sounds like it's from a book. I think you guys yeah. have that good appreciation for each other that if, you know, she wouldn't have supported the dream in the beginning, you know, a little resentment would have been there, but she's seen the ups and downs of what you've done, oh. and she's been along with it, that you realize that, hey, if we don't support each other in balance, well, we will crumble and fall. It's, it's all about balance. you got to oh, figure it, the balance out. And I mean, that that is the hardest thing. Anybody out there, if you're going to start a business, it doesn't matter if it's basket weaving or what it is. It's just trying to find a balance, and I'm still looking for it. On a daily, I'm still looking for it. Yeah, I'm never out here to try to impress anybody. I just want to impress myself every single day. I pretty much go in day in, day out with one task at hand. If I can at least get up out of bed. Yeah. I put my pants on. All right. <laughs> There's some days where it's there. hard, right? Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, real hard. So you just got to come in with the idea of, like, Today. try to get a list <laughs> and just give yourself a couple of small tasks. And if you finish those small tasks, start looking at some other tasks and right. start doing those. And then – Right. So what build. what was your background that allowed you to get into this? I mean, and I mean skill set-wise, being a welder, a fabricator, all that – Um and I'm, I don't mean to diminish anything by saying a welder because we both know yeah. that that can be a derogatory term uh, <laughs> in the fabrication world. So what was it that, that made you like realize that yeah. you were going to be a decent fabricator and you could, you could make the parts that you saw in your head? It, I was actually thinking about this the other day. Like what really was the motivating push factor in my life? Because I come from a family, race car family, building stock cars pretty well known locally. Yeah, yeah. And so young age I was around that. And then picked up a welder when I was like 13. And yeah. I just wanted to build stuff. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I take this thing and put two pieces of metal together. That's cool. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I seen what everybody else did, my cousins and uncles and so forth. So I just went with that and next thing you know, just chip away, chip away, go to this job, go to this job. I've had so many jobs in my whole entire life. But at one point in time, I think really, to be honest, is like when I got into Bigfoot. I mean, like locally mm-hmm. here. Right. Like, oh, you worked at Bigfoot. It's a legend. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's like, right. it's yeah. legendary. Like when you're a kid, you get the little it, Bigfoot trucks. Yeah. Or you yeah. See that the, I stood in the tire. I mean, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I. I yeah. got pictures of me as a child in the tire and pictures of me now, and you put, go side by side. It's so hilarious. There's know? nothing more St. Louis yeah. than Bigfoot mm-hmm. and like the blues. And maybe Ozzy Osbourne's mugshot in a blues jersey. Yeah, exactly. Like, those things really are iconic, right? Yep. And the Cardinals, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah, it started when I got the job there, and that just, the group of individuals there. Like, everybody that worked there, been there for years on years, learned so much. And by this time, I'm in my late 20s, and I was learning so much from them. Yeah. And it just also realized they were letting me do stuff that, Nobody else would ever let me do. I've already been in the, uh, been in turning wrenches on vehicles my whole entire life. Right. It, I always want to make something bigger, faster, whatever. Yeah. And unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to afford all of it. So I started building it myself. Yeah. And then going from building myself, and I was like, oh, I'm making it work. Get that job. Get to see everybody else in the industry. Really start getting a foothold in the industry. And then I just kind of looked up to a lot of those people there. Yeah, and most of them end up started working for me at one point in time. For, <laughs> well, so. it sounds like what matters isn't exactly well. You know the old adage: "It's not what you know; it's who you know." Yeah. yeah. But now more than ever, it's it's really what do you know, and what kind of an energy do you bring to our workshop? What kind of energy do you bring to our brand? Um, you know, I've had to divorce people that would have you believe that they're there to help you. Yeah. But Everyone, really, yeah, yeah. really, they're there to help themselves posture themselves for their next move, whatever that might be. But you know when you get somebody that's around you that is in it just to fucking crush it. Oh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. whether it's their own personality, but something oozes out of you and other people can feel it. And when they do and they're of the same ilk, so to speak, the same cloth or fabric, they want you around. And they want to feed you full of information. They want to make you a better person because they know that you're going to take it and do good things with it. And those things don't, don't even have to be said. It's just a feeling. It's just a gut and a heart feeling. Your head's completely out of it. You get excited being around these people. You like get you. excited. Yeah, it, like you and I. Like, all of all it, of us. Yeah. It, yeah. It, that's like a perfect example. Like, we don't talk very often. Right. And Because we'll, we're busy. Yeah, we're busy people. <laughs> right. And usually, you know, we'll like be something stupid. 
we'll just be like simple text message back and forth every now and again. Or you get an idea, project, yeah. something of that nature, and right. we'll take care of it. But when we get together and we actually see each other face to face, we almost can't shut up. Yeah. It, and we it's, talk about everything. Right. And the coolest thing is when, you, when you're around people like that, like the way we experience that, uh, and it's a lot of the barrel group. It's a lot of the CFT group. It's the evolution cycles group. It's all these people that all sort of have the same mindset of like, you know what? I love you and fuck everything else. Yeah. That's it. I love you. Yeah. Everyone seems to want to know what's going on in everyone else's world. Oh man. How's that been going? How you doing? Right. Like it's right. It's forget what's going on outside of mm-hmm. that circle. It's well, what have you been up to, man? How's life? What have you been doing? Right. What projects? It's Everyone's always focused on each other. And well, there's a dif- there's a difference between somebody calling or texting or whatever or approaching you and saying, "Hey, when's the next event?" As opposed to, "Hey, man, how are you doing?" Yeah, yeah. Like I know that you deal with a lot of shit. How are you doing? Because when you don't, and I'm I speak from firsthand when you don't get that at home because they just don't understand. God love them. I can't keep beating my head against that wall asking for someone to be there for me emotionally if they don't know how, even at home. But amongst friends, there's none of that. Uh, Amongst our friend group that we have, there is no bullshit. And if you're acting like a fucking twat, you're going to tell me I'm acting like a fucking twat. Sorry. I'm sorry to use (laughs) ugly language. I'm trying to curb that. But when I get excited, I get a little, little mouthy. So, um... I think the important thing is I noticed that and I'm working yeah. on it. So anyway, um, my point is that when you say that the reason the conversations go they, the way they do is because of, you know, it's easy. It's the energy. It's the, yes, it's the exactly. vibe. It's, it's every bit of what's coming out of you and entering your body through your ears, your nose, your mouth, your skin, whatever. It's not negative. It's approachable. It's manageable. And all of those things, I think, lead into our businesses. And I think that the reason why you experienced the growth, the growth that you have year over year is because you are still the exact same voice of reason, of craziness, of whatever. It's the same voice. It's the same tone. It's the same, no, same, um, uh, it's the same, uh, what you may call it, intent. Yeah. More, most importantly, it's comfortable. It's comfortable. It's not, you know, there's no bullshit. You know, there's no no smoke and mirrors. There's no curtain. There's no nothing. It's just straight up crushing life. Yeah. It, I don't take things very serious. That's, I think that's been my whole entire thing. It, it, to me, it's be as best person as you possibly can. Don't worry about other people. Just You can worry about them to an extent. Sure. And it goes both customers, friends, people that enter in and out of your life. If you're just... Try to be as humble and great individual as you can to any individual that you meet. Like I said, in today's times and so forth, you just it's walk into somebody so and somebody yells at you over something that doesn't make any sense to you. It, 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 <laughs> right? You I get plenty of that. Why are you going to get podcast. all upset? Right. Why are you going to get upset about it? Don't let it upset you. Yeah. Just take it in and, and be like, well, that's another person's opinion or that's another thing. And don't yeah. let it affect you. You know what? If I got to do this, then... This is what I got to do. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll just turn around, walk away from it, and just shake hands or whatever. Or well, not in today's time, but you you just <laughs> right. You you just smile right. and go about your day and keep living the best freedom of life that we have and right. Keep moving forward. Just move forward on everything. Yeah. So I, I think something that would help that, and it's a very poignant point that you make, is being able to not take things too seriously. Number one. That's something that I struggle with every day because if I see a child entering a street and it's not a crosswalk, that's fucking serious. Yeah. But my problem is when my wife doesn't understand what I'm trying to tell her, that's fucking serious too. But it's not. Yeah. It's yeah, not it serious. It goes along the line of, like we talked about before, not taking things personally that the kid walked out when they're not supposed to. Okay, hey, did yeah. you do that when you were a kid? I bet you you did. Of course, I bet yeah. you yeah. a little asshole shit in the road on yeah. your skateboard. Yeah, of course. Bike. We all were, right. it's, but taking those things of, that's what we talked about last time too. Uh, Josh is like, you know, the big thing is when people have those issues and stuff with you, it's like not taking it personally, but something's going on with them that it's causing that reaction to whatever's going on. You know, like, oh man, they might have some issue with you. Everybody's got a story. Like, something's going on, but it's like, that might've been the one thing that they were looking forward to and it didn't go right because everything else is a shit show. But it's like, 
yeah, the part or whatever issue we're having mechanically might be potentially your fault, but the reaction is not yours. And that's what a lot of people got to really get. Especially as business owners, it's a hard world. You're you're delivering a product and someone's not happy. It's like, okay, cool. We'll we'll try and rectify it. But realizing that it's not personally what's going on, it's something bigger in their life. Dude, I'm writing something for, um, not something, I'm writing part of a song for our band. And part of it is what we just said is that, that everybody has some shit. And I've, I've come up with a way to say that it's like everybody's got a pile, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where you cry at the bottom or you climb to the top and smile. Like that's really like it encompasses all of what we talk about. And I find myself stuck somewhere in the middle of that pile trying to get someone, trying to get another person to just do this with their hand instead of like this and looking down. Yeah. It's it's difficult to be able to say, well, you know what? Hell with it. I don't care because I do care. I care greatly. So how do you care greatly about a situation, but not try to massage the edges so you control how it fits into your puzzle? Because that's, we're not supposed to do that. We're not supposed to force things. We're not supposed to control things. We're supposed to let the world happen. But what happens whenever what you love the most isn't loving you back the way you need to or want to. When do you pop fucking smoke? When do you pull the cord? When do you, when do you bounce? Like, and I know I'm not, that's a very hypothetical thing for me to say, but I think it sort of fits our conversation in everybody's got their shit. You're a business owner. You got to move forward. You got family, kids, you got to move forward. And this isn't intended to, to bash my, my spouse or anybody else's. This is a very real thing that some of us deal with is that no matter what you do, that spouse at home isn't necessarily the same person that's going to understand your, your ins and outs. And if you hear that, that's my dog dreaming over in the corner. Yeah. She's <laughs> my service dog cage. She's, she's dreaming away over there. It's better than normal. Cause she hates storms. It's funny. Yeah. Whenever we both hear explosions, we hit the deck. I'm like, I look at her. I'm like, Hey punk, you're supposed yeah. to be helping me here. Get on top of me. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, so I, I, I sort of, I digress a bit, but I, I, I wonder how, if there was a, if there was a rule book, if from God herself or whomever that said, Hey, when you love something more than you can imagine, but you don't have that warm, fuzzy feeling inside, like you're being loved back the same way. I got a feeling that God, earth, the universe would say, if you keep doing it, it's only on you. Yeah. Right? Like, if you keep spinning your wheels, it's on you. It's, how noble is it to want to feel noble? That's but egotistical. It, that's yeah, it's but, all part of that journey of life, though. You take that step off that path. It's not to say, though, that you can't circle back or that that path won't lead you back to you, totally, where yeah. you were. You know, right, it's, right. It's, you yeah. Know, it, you've heard I, before. I, it's a hard one. I don't think anybody's got an answer to that, at least not for me, and I'm not looking for one. That's no. one of those you're getting caught up in the moment as of right now, what's going on right now. And I but, think everybody gets stuck into that. But like, isn't that where we're supposed to but, live is in the now? Like, not, yeah, not yesterday, not tomorrow. You're not supposed to dwell in the now. Well, you, well here's you know? a tricky part of that. The now is only the now right now. Yeah. What you just, just said gone. doesn't fucking matter. Right? It's gone. That's that's the past. You can't change yep. that. You, whether you say something or do something. <laughs> so I get that. And so, that's part of my fucking problem is I'm standing in the middle of this shitty-ass pile going, right, well, I don't want to go back down there. Yeah. I only want to go up there, but I want to bring these people with me. That's where I want to go. Oh, fuck, my hand's all full of goo. Nobody's sticking to my hands. Why can't anybody come with me? It's just like literally if we'll use the you know, analogy of climbing a mountain, you might go up a little bit and then tumble back down. Oh yeah, you know, no but, shit. But that is that is life. Is you know you're gonna go up and then you're gonna go back. You know yeah. you're gonna have those ups and downs. No different than like, oh man, I'm gonna get to that peak, and then you get to that next little wave, and you're like, oh shit, okay, cool, I'm only on a plateau. And you look back up, and you're like, mountain's a lot taller than I thought it was. Right. You know, but yeah, that is anything do. of anything you try to do. Like you're gonna go down. You know, you might have to go. Hey, I had to go back because I got to bring so and so. They're ha- they're struggling. Cool. Get them. Yeah. And they may not go at your pace of life, which is fine. No one will. Yeah. No different than like fitness. Everyone's going to have their own pace, but you back down, pull them a little bit to get them up a little higher. So cool. Now we're off that plateau. Now we're to the next one. Yeah. We're making progress. It's 
not about the speed. It's are we making progress? Yeah, you're still going to be and moving that's like, forward. Uh, oh, God, and again with the quotes, whoever says it, like, you know, and it's a stoic one, you know, honor anybody who's at least trying and moving, no matter how slow you're going, you're still making effort. That's and totally going right. That way. And that's the thing, like, when you see people putting forth effort, that's that's the aha moment. That's the, uh, but the coup de gras. Just a grain of effort, it's still better than just nothing. And that's I, I the hard right. part yeah. of looking at effort than not. Like, probably because you're, I guarantee you're a perfectionist too when it comes to your, you know, craftsmanship and everything that you do, Josh. It's like, you're like, oh man, look at, mm, nope, that one. Yeah. Throw that one away. Let's do yeah, another yeah, one. Yeah, and well, I know that's how all the you time. are. But also with employees, right? Like, like, I think that what you're saying and what I'm saying probably. How many times have you had an employee that you knew had it? They fucking had it, but they just kept fucking stepping on their own toes. That's like a I'm still dealing, great I'm still, I'm still dealing with that almost on a daily basis. Right, so. and we are not here to call anybody out. <laughs> no. But as an employer, as a brand. At as, what point in time do you cut ties and you cut your losses on it and you keep moving forward? Well, you got to look at the options. As far as the business-wise goes, I look at there's, there's a lot of things I would like to change. I would love to hire in a lot more different people. Yeah. And, but if I do that, then financially, we're just not going to make it. And then also it just, we, my business is a roller coaster. It's, it's such a big roller coaster. It's Mm -hmm. like, I could kill a month and just be like, wow, that's the best I've ever done. Then I have nothing for two months. I'm like, well, all those profits just went straight back into this. Well, you've got an odd business (laughs) in that. Yeah, I do. It's, it's a consumable but once they have consumed it, they don't need. They don't need they, to they come don't back. Need yeah. me anymore, right? So once, with barrel, it's well, they had something, but they can always get another thing. Exactly. So it's still a consumable, but it's like, oh, I want to get some more before this runs out. Mm-hmm. You're in a very tough position because you have to find new customers every day. Yep. And that's dude. That's a tall order for any of us. Yeah. Or you new know? things that the old ones need, potentially. Dude, totally. And that goes back to that idea of, like, a subscription service, which I know this is not my world, but I yeah. can't help but think about these things. It's like, how cool would it be if you bought a part from you and you told them, hey, if you come to me for your next part on this vehicle, then I'm going to give you a discount. And if you come to me a third time, I'm going to give you more of a discount. Like a punch card of parts. Totally, yeah. That's that's a way that you might be able to gain more loyalty. But I don't know yeah. shit about yeah. Shinola here, Josh. Actually, I'm just spitballing. I actually, <laughs> I actually did run a loyalty program on the website. Who I'd say it was probably like two years ago. Okay. That So it's just like every other loyalty program. You order $10, you get a point or whatever, you know. Yeah. Then you cash all those in at, at any time that you want. Right. You could cash it in right then and there pretty much, or you could cash it in months, years, whatever down the road. It worked ish. <laughs> yeah. But it also didn't work because it's yeah. like you said, it's like, here I make let's say I make twenty of the top best products for this vehicle. And it's expensive. Mm-hmm. Let's say you're gonna spend a grand for all of twenty of these products. Right. Well, you could start chipping away and buy a couple of them then by the time you're almost done buying them all you could cash in all your loyalty points and then kind of get that you know discounted or you're just going to end up spending all the money and then you're going to be like i bought everything on one hot like one shot now i got all these loyalty points yeah what am i gonna do yeah absolutely no clue what i'm gonna do with them so it kind of was like a Kind of a flop, to be honest. Well, it can it be a really it can be a managerial well nightmare too. I know because with our subscription service, maybe somebody doesn't get an email that says, "Hey, we've got something new. Do you want it?" Maybe they their credit card expires, so then they're like, "Hey, why didn't I get my stuff?" Yeah, well, I don't <laughs> know. Me. Let me go look. Wait, dude, you didn't get charged. Yep. And you know, unfortunately, I don't have the bandwidth to be like every day. Okay, these three people didn't get charged, right? Something happened to their card. Let me reach out to each of them. How how long can I sustain that? Yeah, how long could you sustain it? You couldn't. It, <laughs> I don't know all about that, but it's like yeah, yeah you do. Yeah, you're trying to comb through, you know, you know, potentially hundreds, if not thousands, of people of you know information. It's just like yeah, you know, you do your part, but it's it's again, you just you took the risk of oh, well, loads program, and eh, it wasn't the best for us, and then but you still have repeat customers, new customers. You make badass stuff. Yeah, it's part of business is yeah. trying something, and if it sticks, it sticks. You know. Yeah. You're literally trying to throw shit on the wall, and oh, that one didn't stick. Okay, out. Oh, I fa- uh, failure daily. I love it. Yeah, I love all my failures. Yeah. Sure, I yeah. grow from my failures. Totally, I, dude. I do it on 
wake up and it's like have dreams of it almost. And it's like, well, I'm going to try it. I mean, yeah. It, yeah, good example of running my CNC machine. I am not a good CAD guy. Like I, I'm self learning on everything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kyle, who works for me, awesome guy. He doesn't really know the CAD program or the CAM program all that well either. Right. So it's like both of us are learning. Yeah. And yesterday I was like, I need to run these parts. I'm out of them. I got to run them. I usually third part party them, get them. It just saves time. Yeah. It's not so much saving money. It just saves time to have bulk loads of that ran. But it's like, if I can run 20, 30, 40 of them, that'll help my customers out right now. Yeah. Oh, totally, yeah. yeah. Uh, that just ruined a, you know, <laughs> <it> just <laughs> ruined, ruined a $50 bit, ruined a $200 vice. Run, ruined a, right. It's just like, well, none of this worked. I'm going to sit back in my office in the computer and try to figure it out again. Yeah. And it's like, I could be upset about it. Yeah. But or I could go, am I going to spend thousands of dollars to try to go back to school? Let right. me try to balance school when I'm doing shipping and emails, invoices, third-party products. You know as well as I do, it just takes away it just, from it. It just, just it, yeah. and, and then what am I going to learn in that school if I go back to school for it? No, it's not trying to tell people don't go to school. But, sure, yeah, yeah. But in my stance, it's just not going to work. Yeah. Two, two kids, a wife, you, business that consumes 60-plus hours a week. Dude, I, I made, I manufactured, I marketed, I I. I brought in the right people to do the graphic design. I, I managed all those things for barrel. So I hear you. Yeah. If, if I was trying to do eight of my daily tasks and reach out to people to follow up and try to grow new business with retailers on the phone or email and follow up with customers about their experience. And no, yeah. I will end up exactly where I used to be. And so would you end up on the fucking floor crying like a baby, trying to figure out what more do I need to do to make this thing work? Well, you need to do less. Yeah. That's why we started doing dealers. We have tons of dealers. And it's like dealers, you I done workshops with them. You yeah, know, they yeah. came in, show installs, how the products work, the ins and outs, uh, all the information. Everything is for it. And then you pay the dealers a good chunk of money to do all your advertising, do everything else. Yeah. I mean, it takes a big load off of me because I'm still pretty much one man band still. Well, by, uh, by giving them a better margin, a really yeah. good margin, you're including the, the price for their marketing, right, in that. Yeah, okay. exactly. So That's what I, th- I just want to make sure. Yeah, so you give them a good enough amount, which pretty much takes up most of your profit. Of course. And it's like, there's that balance. It's like, well, I can make more money if I just sold it on my website. Yeah, good luck with that. But okay. also at the same time, my website has issues left and right. I mean, I created it with, yeah. I never created a website before. I created it five years ago and I don't know how it still operates as good as it does. Right. And, Cause it's so, so grassroots yeah. and basic, yeah. right? Like it yeah. really is. And, right. and it's like in a couple of weeks, I'm talking to somebody who's does nothing but websites and then like take over this for me. Yeah, and yeah dude, we're getting ready out, to redo you know? ours too. Barrel's so, getting a makeover on the website too, man. Same yeah. thing. That's yeah. what you do though. The time is you, like you've found the hard way is you realize you can't do every aspect of the business. You try, you learn a little here, you learn a little bit about CAD and I've heard that's horrible. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. when I was in, in two and I was an engineer major for a bit, you know, you learn some of this. Oh yeah. It's like, Oh, that was fucking boring. Can I just build something? Yeah. You right. know, give me something to build, but you it's trial and error. Then you realize, all right, well, it's not worth my time and my effort. As cool as it would be to learn this, it is not possible for any human to know how to do everything. Yeah, dude, that's for real. And if you did that, <coughs> there would be nothing because there'd be no specialist. You would not yeah. be the expert at what you do and vice versa to you or myself. Yeah. That's the thing that people don't get is like, yeah, as cool as it would be to be able to do everything, yeah, you can't. And that's why we're all masters of our own craft or whatever. And that's, I think, a big part of what a lot of people need to, instead of hitting that wall, is learn a little bit, get it up. You, got, you learned enough to get your website. Yeah. Cool. Yep. We got the base. We'll just hold on to that. Okay, now we're in a better spot. Cool. You know what the fuck to do? You do that. You build me my website. Let's do this. Yeah. And I think this is a trial and error, but most people need to realize is that you will never be the best at everything you want to do. And that's fine. Be the best things that you're good at or what you have passions for. Put your energy there. Let somebody else take the reins and somewhere where you're not the best at. Because Yeah, 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 totally. You know, it is the truth. You yeah, know? well, you're going to spin your wheels for hours or days or weeks or months, maybe years, if you don't do that. It's like when I tried to do all of my own video editing for the What More Could You Want podcast, 
I literally took three weeks for the first episode. Three weeks yeah. of daily just learning that. And you were like, oh, it's up till tomorrow. It's yeah, like, dude. Why? And then finally, Jordan, of course, he's generally my voice of, voice of reason. Uh, for you, those of you that don't know Jordan, he's not here with us on any of these podcasts. He likes to hang out in the shadows. Badass dude. He's a lurker, but he's a bad mamma jamma, and he knows what he's talking about. Um, but whenever, if if I didn't have him telling me, hey, man, I got somebody that will edit that for X amount of dollars an episode. I'm like, well, that's dude, like one like hour a, of my rate, what I would charge someone. He's yeah. Like a, he's a guy like, you know, yeah. that knows everyone type thing. Yeah, yeah, Along totally. You, yeah. So. Yeah, he, he does. He's And he's the one that's introduced me to countless people. And if it wasn't for Jordan, we wouldn't have a relationship like we do with um, with with people like Jamie from Hatebreed. We just wouldn't have that. Um, and it's not to say that, that we haven't helped massage that, but if it wasn't for somebody in my corner that was watching out for me, when I took that misstep and he said, hey, eh, come back this way a little bit, it's just a mentor. It's it, And you, your mentors come in the strangest shapes sometimes. You know, and sometimes it's somebody that might be younger, a little less traveled, so to speak, but more traveled in some other way, and that's how I view him. Right. And I think that's how we all have to have somebody like that in our corner that knows the nuances and the ins and outs of what we do, but is also a friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's hard to find. Find somebody that'll genuinely give you their ear, give you their time, uh, lend you assistance, and not because it just betters them, right? Because they want to help. It's pretty outstanding to have. I think it's important. I think yeah. it's critical, you know, for growth. Um, and, and for me, I consider you, Joshua, one of those people because. Yeah. I, I can Appreciate always that. count on you to treat me uh, fair and, and honest, but also with a, an empathetic approach as like, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I know what you're dealing with. Well, I'm not afraid to give you a hug. Exactly. There's that too. <laughs> right. But sometimes you need the words that make your brain realize something. Right. Yeah. And you know, as of late, it's been so important for me to have you there to say, Hey man, you doing okay? Yeah. Just remember, keep just slow down. Just, just every you know, couple of weeks, I try right, to throw right. you that little text message. Right? Just yeah. So like yeah. you're doing good. And you're going forward. That's that's right. Me trying to keep pushing you up that hill that you said you're stuck on. Yeah. That's totally. That, that's that little message saying you're doing something. Well, you're it's, moving it's, forward. It's seen. It's it's heard. Who? <laughs> it's it's right. <laughs> um, I'll try to get on your level there, <laughs> and uh, and it's appreciated more than I think I've I've ever let that come out of my mouth. So. Right here in front of all of our people, I'd like to say thank you very genuinely and appreciatively. Oh. Um, it, it's, it means more than you know, and uh, I don't have a whole lot of that in my life, so thank you. Well, it's no problem at all. That's, that's, you're a good person. Well, you'd like to think so. This is what people say on social media about you. but Well, yeah, totally. You're, you're really, yeah, totally, yeah. <laughs> really and I'm good. cool with that. And, and the thing yeah. is, is I, I used to like genuinely worry if I you said or did something, like it's, is somebody going to worry? Well, now I have so many people in my corner telling me, no, please keep telling us these things. Please keep talking. I have finally learned how to just really say, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I can't. Because if I do, that stops me from giving what I know I can. Especially in today's time, we're all so interconnected in so many different ways. It's not even funny. In today's time, everybody gets a voice, an opinion, and opposition of everything. True. Now. Yeah. And yeah. you can't. Take the criticism with it, you know. Of course. I, I have people that bash me. I got I, There's a hater group out there that just absolutely hates me. Sure. And, I, and I'm fine with that. Right, I, I've, yeah. take, I've taken a lot of what they said and was like, screw you. I don't care what you think. And then there was stuff also I was like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, totally. I did fuck that up. I fucked that up. I screwed a lot of stuff up. Yeah. And I do it still on a daily basis. I, I forgot an air filter the other day on an order, and it's like, well, I'll ship that out. Express that out, but you admit and, you know, it though. And it's like you I, admit it, yeah. And there's there's times where it's like I get weird stuff sent in to me, and it's like, nah, nah, that didn't happen. And I'm going back through inventory and checking video cameras and stuff because I'm like, there's no way. And it's yeah. like sometimes there wasn't. There's sometimes there's people out there just looking for free stuff. Yes, oh, yeah. and yeah, and, I, yeah. And I've actually came across it a lot more in the last like two years than I've ever seen, which is just well, people blows my mind tend away. to think that if you have a website. If you have an inventory, if you have a brand, you make a lot of money. Yeah. And and if I pull one over on you, they well, would, then fuck the man. They want handouts. But what they, every, yeah. Everybody thinks that they're 
some icon now because oh I got, look I got this good following great right. yeah but you should give me something because yeah, like, I've done this and that's you see that all the time like you know some of the brands that I like follow and stuff on social media you'll see like the, you know hey I got a new release coming oh man you know it's like cool oh that's cool you know yeah. good for them got new gear or, you know whatever coming and then you like look through the comments oh hey would love to you know have you send me some stuff you know it's just like have you ever bought any of their stuff before? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, Dude, if you've never used their stuff, bought whatever it is they have to offer, why in the hell would they want to give it to you for free? Well, check this out. What if you had some really good friends who you thought were good friends, right? They were always there when you thought you needed them, right? When the light is on. Exactly. <laughs> so what happens when those people are constantly like, hey, man, um, I'm out of some oil. Can I get some oil? Hey, man, how do I go about getting some oil? Are you, really, how do you go about getting it? How about you fucking get on the site and you order it? How about you go to a retailer and you buy it? I've you want to help me? Yeah, I've never. Of, help me. Never in right? years I've I don't think you I've ever texted you about it. oil. Never. No. And I've just ordered Nothing. it online. Right, I know, <laughs> which is it, yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, I but I tell my friends all the time, I'm like, listen, I'll hook you up, but I got to cover my cost these days, so I can't yeah. just give everything away for free. And I never hear from them. I don't hear from them again. That's weird. That's it's like, oh, wait. So, well, it's not weird, though, because yeah, whenever just, I didn't have boundaries, when I when I screwed up and never made boundaries that said, hey, if you cross this line, then... Well, and, and that's a, it's a give-take. You're going you know, to be happy. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll hook you up with some, you know, oil or whatever it may be. Yeah, part Need you yeah. Do, do me a favor, though. I want you to, you know, get on social media, just... Do a little story or post or right. Hey, any you know anybody times asked just you know yep. If somebody asks about oh man that smells good or dude that's awesome yeah. what the hell did you do to your truck or whatever right yeah drop the name yeah, yeah man you got to go see and what, that's my, what you my, would hope Josh, Jeremy whomever right that's where you hope it comes from but yeah there are people that will always like oh cool thanks I'll dude, take that I have people that it. I don't even know that buy it and do more to help us than people that are quote-unquote close friends have ever done. Seriously. Yeah. Because if you use our product and then you just go take a picture and tag us in it and you're doing something like, I don't know, let's just say uh, walking through a parking lot. Yeah. There's not a, we are not relative. We are nothing. We got a tag in it and it's like, dude, I don't think you understand like, this would have been the perfect opportunity to say something about just drop being a, drop a box or a bottle. Be, be in a the normal guy, lot. be like something, just like just another day. You know, wouldn't be complete without or anything. And I'll never give somebody any of that information. That's on you. But tell us how you use it. Please don't come to me and ask for free shit, and then just go home and enjoy your free shit. Because what do I get out of that? Yeah. What th- yeah, that you you're using my shit, it, like and stuff like that. Like I, you know, tag. <laughs> Take barrel brands in mind the other day, but talking about like charitable things and, you know, realizing, you know, how blessed you are. Yeah. Well, it's one because, the, you know, going apart with our opportunity to us to work together, but two, totally, yeah. the same things that you do with the company is you do things for other people. No different than like, you're like, Oh, Hey, you have something I need in it. Let's, let's, let's have a little bottle. Let's try That's, that's and, what's up. And, and that's, that's what's up. Why yeah. I think of, you know, tagging the brand and things like that is because that's besides just, you know, the, product itself i see the brand as the whole of totally. what you do for the bigger picture well, absolutely and i think you know but i know you on a different level than you know a lot of the public so there's a difference yeah. but the product is one thing but i see the bigger picture of what you do for others as the big thing and i think hopefully you know as i tag it or somebody else in that renter they see it as oh man well maybe they right knows but yeah i yeah. get it's, a, it's my a thing, thing is context just, just, like i can go and tag you but show my yeah. truck but it's like I, you've done any of my truck. And I've, right. I've yeah. had I lots of people tag <laughs> tag me in their stuff and don't even have any of my products on it. Right. This might sound like the corniest thing in the whole world. I give away so many shirts. Yeah. Like, sure. Thank you, Troy, over at TK. I mean, he. Oh, I love uh, that guy. Dude, love he, him. He makes so many shirts I, Yeah. for me all the time. And I give away, like, pretty much anything over, like, 200 bucks. You're getting a free shirt. I got dude, it on the website. Yeah. He's and, rad, man. And this is, like, the corniest thing. I want to see people wearing them. It, it's like I've probably given away thousands of these things. Dude, yeah. And I get tags of like, oh, here's the parts on my truck or here's this there. And it's like, sounds weird, but I want to see a picture of you in the shirt. Just show show them out somewhere. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's, it's, I, uh, I got some like old ones because that was like the biggest thing I was doing. I was going on social media for a long time and I was looking up the tags and I was looking up the hashtags and 
trying to find people. It's like I found my shirt, like ooh, one of the oldest ones, like old, old shirt. Yeah. Uh, that was actually done uh, over at Jolly Rogers. Yeah. Way back in the day. Oh my God, you know Keith? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So That's crazy. Keith and I skated together whenever I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, oh, I did so roller weird. derby and everything. So I had okay. multiple years of roller derby. So the truth finally so. comes out. You're a roller <laughs> derby guy. Yeah. Nice, dude. Did, yeah, referee and everything. Yeah. Confluence Crush and well, Harry so, was part of it. So and, Joshua Grassel, our bass player and other vocalist and Elbow yep. Through Hammer, his ex-wife or girlfriend and children all roller derby. Yep. And That's they used, how I knew him. Okay, cool, yeah. man, because he used to come and do the skate club thing. I'd met him at, like, the skate park in Troy, Illinois, <laughs> and his family would be over at the roller skating rink practicing. Yeah. And I always tried to get my daughter to do it because she grew up so quick. She was always bigger than everyone else, like when she was a child, and she never wanted anything to do with it. But that's yeah. so weird that we both know yeah. those guys. It's through. a small world around here. It's so, so. cool. I love it. But, but anyway, yeah, man. I'm sorry. Anyways, like I saw a picture of the shirt out in front of like Mount Rushmore, and I was like, "That's cool." I've yeah. seen some of those older shirts like out on the beach in Florida, and now I only get photos of like my close friends wearing them in places. Yeah, and it's like, man, I just. I just like to see more people wearing them. Like I, yeah. I, I, throw, I, you I know, give them all out there. Put a, when you, you know, put your card in there or something with it. Like you know, use the hashtag of, yeah. you know, this and send us a cool pic. You know, maybe we'll yeah. share it or you know, sure, some little incentive for them to do it. You know, and that's the thing. Like all companies will do this is use this hashtag and you know do that post this pic. Hey, if we like it, we'll repost it, share it. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing and that. Then, yeah, we have that know. going if you actually go on my website on the home page, if you go all the way to the bottom, if any time you use the hashtag CFT performance, it pulls it right up there pulls and it, it updates so it updates it daily. So, Look at that. I see it right so, there. Yeah, so daily yeah. if you ever use it, it pops it up nice. right in there. And that's on any platform. That's so, really cool, man. So we got that integrated in probably like four months ago or so. And that's, that's so it's things kind things of like kind of do, a yeah. cool so thing to see. These are just there. maybe customer images or shop images or. Usually it's always my stuff because I'm, <laughs> you know, on a hashtag cool. contest to say, hey, whoever's got our shirts, post yourself in some cool, outrageous I, place. Dude. I'm going to pick a winner, yep. you know, based upon like the most outrageous or coolest place you can be, you know. Yeah. That definitely sounds like a great marketing gimmick. <laughs> well, you know, put it, put some parameters to it. Like, hey, we want to see like coolest place like outdoors, mm -hmm. some crazy place with you yeah. in our shirt. Yeah, like what's the wildest we place you've we, been? Yeah, we don't want to see you know you with trucks and cars. We want to see you somewhere out of the element of what we are, but with our shirt on. Something crazy. Yeah, yeah. hell no. Yeah, I like Since that. More people man. going outdoors. We can't go everywhere else anywhere. So I, yeah. <laughs> so one of your images is of the uh, the mask. Yeah, <laughs> oh, dude, this is so funny, dude. Like There's that. a mask and it's got his image here, CFT performance on it, and then uh, above it it says "Here for advertisement," <laughs> and below "And avoid your warranty." <laughs> and that's a mask. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that's a COVID fine. mask. <laughs> Dude, I, the, I, the I, biggest I, question it's always asked: Will it void my warranty? Will it void my warranty? Yeah. I hate to tell you, in today's time, anything that you do to your vehicle, you go buy a brand new vehicle and you don't change your oil or you don't have the documentation of it, you avoided the warranty. That's I right. Mean, yeah. They, they have got way too many lawyers on their side for you to think you're going to pull one over on them. It, the newer the vehicle, that chip tracks everything. Bro, you that's do. absolutely yeah. right. That's why I drive an old your, fucking your Jeep. Your Carfax, yeah. man. You pull that up. Oh. Well, you insurance know? companies are, will outdo your rates anymore nowadays. I, I was just talking about this the other day with Kyle because he's looking at car insurance, and they're like, we'll give you 30% off if you put the thing in your car. And it's like. I'd rather have the money. Yeah. Or yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather yeah, spend the money. Yeah. yeah, fuck so, you. I don't, I don't want to. How many settle? people do you know that drives 80 miles an hour on the highway and they have for 20-plus years and never been in an accident? That's right. You put that in there, and they're like, you know, speed limit 70, right? We're going to have to up your rate now. It, yeah, you like, know what? exactly where it's I thought go. this was for me. Like, yeah, yeah. no, that's so. sort of like the uh, the Teslas, man. I want I, one, I, dude. I, I, I love one. them, but I'm I'm telling you, if you're telling me that somebody I don't know who can turn my fucking car off while I'm driving down the road, I, I'm sorry, I can't sign up for that. I cannot you never sign own up for it that. either. You never own it. You never own a car. No, you don't. You never you own. Never it. will own it. No. So so what, you have to be okay with that, and I don't know that I am. I. And I know that's probably going against what nature is telling me to do. Just chill the fuck out. Yeah, yeah but that's, because but I think too much about it. Well, everybody's, I mean, there you go. You're being tracked 24 seven. You're always being talked about until I see you with a Nokia brick or something again, you know, right. It, you're always, hey, I have getting, one upstairs. Yeah. I have one and I've, I've used it and it, 
the only reason I can't continue to use it is because of barrel. Yeah. That's the only reason. I have to be able to post things on social. I have to do all these things. And let's face it, Instagram well, on a laptop? Technically, yep. they ain't going to no, have, it doesn't like, work. Well, yeah, it's not meant because it's a mobile platform. But right. no, you could do an old brick for, like, Got this one. Is my personal number, and then business phone. Yeah, easily. Then you got to carry two goddamn phones with yep, you. And that's, that's why I got rid of my two phones. Exactly, it just dude. It, it's it too much. What I wish, you know, when I was previously working, I would have had a business because to have everything come to your personal phone when it's, like, 24-7, it's just like, well, I don't, I don't have anything to do with it. Then, like, if you text me and you need me, I'm so sick of it, then I'm ignoring you right. when I need to be engaged with you. The new and iPhones that's the thing that sucks. have um, and we Samsung's, have the favorites and everything, like, like, yeah, my phone's turned off right now. Well, it's on, but it's yeah. turned off. Like, right, right. Here's all the phone calls I missed. Right, we never heard it. Yep. But if Jeremy's trying to get a hold of me, I got you on my favorites. Right, so it will same. Go through yeah, the, exactly. Know, so. Like if you get a hold of me at two in the morning, I'm gonna fucking answer yeah. it. You know, some knucklehead from I don't know him, a telemarketer at midnight. I'm not gonna fucking answer it. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Oh yeah, I get it. It's fucking day. unreal. But you know, I think that um, I, I'm pretty sure that. If it weren't for the company aspect of it, I would have my brick phone. I've got a Motorola Razor sitting right down there. Oh, man, that's and then I've, I've got a Sonim. Uh, it's like a first responder phone. It's got a bigger battery. It's got all yeah. those things. And that is my phone. Like, when we go out in the woods, that's the phone that I take as an emergency. Like, I know it'll get a signal. I think you just carry flares. It lasts for days. Carry flares, too. Yeah. Signal also, there. I've got two that I carry in my Jeep. But it's in my first aid kit, just yeah. two flares. I mean, it's... Oh, the ones that shoot, not road flares. Oh, no, mine are road <laughs> flares, bro. I don't need to shoot it. <laughs> like, like, we, we're in distress. Change the weather. The chill. We'll just shoot change our weather. Right? I miss the old yeah, Nextel days. The yeah, Joe and them talking about yeah. that. Dude, so do I, man. <laughs> like Best phones I've ever owned was the Nextels. Dude, and the like push the to talk. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I've got two little ham handheld radios that have got the push to talk, obviously. And it is the best fucking thing ever. It, yep. I, I, like the service, the company, all of it was just a little off. Nothing ever worked 100, percent but the idea was, dude, it was spot I was on. Texting man. with the what T8 or whatever, what was as it was called? Oh no, the Sidekick thing, no, the mobile. The, no, so the 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 text form because you're using your. Oh yeah, T8, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you didn't oh, have constantly a keyboard. You're, you're using tapping that. on the numbers. And I remember yeah. what year. So senior in high school, I think, when. I finally had text because you know, only can send so much because how expensive yeah, it was. Yeah. But like, you're like doing it, and you're like, "Oh, fuck me, I gotta go all the way back." This, yeah, this and that. Dude. Like, yeah. And if thing, you got a phone that had like a cursor, you could move to a, a in between I had letters. The old BlackBerry days, I had yeah, some dude. Flat black Nokia phone and just doing that thing with it. Yeah, and you know, you don't want to be the guy that's like, "Well, I can't text you back, sorry." Because that's how so many people communicate now. Like, yeah. you, if well, you call you know, somebody, it's weird. Yeah, it's a, it, it it's almost a biz, is. Like, a, I, I have a, I, that's the way I am. Yeah, I'm like, email me. Be, Don't call me. Just yeah. email me. Well, email's good because so then you can. I can go back keep on it easily. Yeah, that's well, what you I always said too. Like, don't text me or email me because then I have the string of like, if we need to problem solve something, we can go back to the conversation. The newer iPhones and some of the even older Androids, but definitely the newer ones have where. You don't have to have two SIM cards in it to be two phone numbers. You can program one of them as an eSIM. And so now, like on my phone, I have a, uh, a 772 number that is my private business line. But then my 806 number is, that's my personal one I've had since like 2000. Yeah. I don't want to get rid of it, but it's become a hindrance because all the telemarketers have it, all the bullshit. But when the other number fucking rings, I answer it. I fucking know. I mean, as long as it's not after 6 o'clock yeah. or so, I fucking answer it. And nobody has that. It's just on the site. It's on. So I know that if somebody's calling me, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's something, something I have yeah, to answer it. Important. So it's sort of like having two phones, but you get the pleasure of just carrying one. But then that automatically negates the purpose of having a second line. So it's sort of this like weird, like like I used, like to say, like a self-looking ice cream cone I, I don't know how to get out of that cycle. I don't know yeah. how to, to get away from just, I don't know. I'd, I'd love to fucking let go of everything. But I've also, you know, admittedly, I've I've thought about just turning barrel off. Yeah. And, and then stepping away from it and going, you know what? If it's there when I come back, cool. If it's not, it wasn't meant to be. I think every business owner goes through that point of <laughs> like. probably just, right. How do like, I survive, you, Josh? You, you know, you just, you're sitting there going, oh. 
God, people, why make my life simpler? Laws that keep changing and everything gets harder and harder. And then you want to fulfill it. Like on my end, it's like, I want to fulfill a really good job. I want to give a good product. I want to give some support. I want to do everything I can. Yeah. But also I'm restricted by a lot of laws. Laws keep on changing. They keep on adding new things and so forth like that. And it's like, now it's like buku. It's taboo. We can't talk about it. We can't tell you in a text. We can't tell you in a messenger. <laughs> I can't help you with this because it's kind of illegal. It's like being a backdoor drug dealer now. And yeah, but it, that's it's how so they weird. they make you feel. It definitely. That's is. not how you should feel. No. But so many of us small business owners are made to feel like we're we're fucking the system or we're trying to get over on someone. Are you kidding me? Look at these. <laughs> Billion dollar corporations and what they do just to get by with a tenth of what we try to get by with. Yeah. And all we're trying to do is survive. And we are, you know, small business living on a dream and a desire, but the big picture is they don't see you. You're not giving back what they want. You know? Yeah. There's not enough that you're putting into the pot. Eh, you ain't giving us enough yet. Yeah. Well, that's that's it, it, anything. And, and, and oh, while you're trying to give us some money, we're going to take more. Well, it's just like the right? state of Illinois, great. Like every single year, it's like, I know I got to get a couple thousand dollars saved up by the end of the year when I do taxes because instantly, oh, you own a corporation in Illinois? 500 yeah. bucks. Yeah, yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Right off the bat. Yeah. You, even though you paid them your thousands of dollars and all your corporational fees and everything else, you still got to pay this. Well, you know, they've gotten better at their initial fee. Yeah. Their initial fee to register an LLC in Illinois was like $600. Yeah, and mm-hmm. if you're starting to start 50. a small business, you're like, "What the it's fuck?" Fifty bucks in Missouri. Well, now yeah. Illinois has knocked it down. I think it's sixty bucks. Oh, I wish. I, I, I mean, mine was like three hundred and thirty some dollars. No, it's down to like sixty down, bucks now. Yeah. But I also have an S corp, so I do a corporation. But if you though. do an LLC, it's as simple as like sixty bucks now. Yeah. I wish the hell I would have had that when I, I started. Yeah. You know, when Barrel Beard and Tattoo was a thing when it first started, it was six hundred bucks out of my pocket. And it was like if you want to expedite it, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's seven fifty. It's an extra hundred and fifty yeah. bucks or something. Like Yeah. Well you, so you're gonna sit on it even though you have it, but if I pay you more money, you'll shit on the next guy to put me ahead of him. <sighs> okay. These systems yeah. are so fucked. Oh, everything is so screwed up. It, it, it's you know, and it's a wonder that people are are in this sort of revolutionist, like anarchist sort of mindset. It's like when everything's fucking crazy and nothing works. Fuck it. Throw it in the water. Get rid of it. Yeah. Start over. Like, that's, I think that's where people are, you know, especially I, if you're a business that's, owner. It, that's it, it's just interesting times this whole entire year. Yeah, <laughs> right? And we're not here to talk about politics. No. or We're not here to talk about any of that. Not happening. I'll walk out. What, yeah, <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, as a business owner, right, or somebody yeah. acts as a, as a you, you're a business owner, right? How, when do you say, again, when do you say, Enough is enough, Illinois or whoever. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to go live and be by myself. Fuck you guys. Like, I'm tired of playing the game. I don't need to gain fame or notoriety. I'm just trying to put food on the table. Yeah, but that's not, unfortunately, the simplistic way of the thought process of what we're three here discussing. The world doesn't see it that way. You're so right. Everybody wants to make money. Yeah. And, you know, it goes it, all yeah. the, back to the way of like, you know, okay, if we go back, you know, everyone was freaking out about the coin shortage. Oh, my God. You know, talking about the Bible. Shit, way before the Bible even was a thought process. Right. The world existed that way without commodity. It was, hey, you're the best hunter in the tribe. Cool. I need some more food. I'm the best builder. Oh, your home needs. Great. Let's do this. Yeah. You know, you went back to the, the ways of where you used skill sets and craft to give each other, you know, hey, benefit. Yeah. Trade. But trade. The barter trade. Yeah, we, you can't do that because, again, it goes back to the dollar. Then the rich wouldn't be rich because they're smart in the fact of that, but they may not have that craft skill, so yeah. then they would be at the bottom of the barrel. Well, Whereas, how about, you know, your skill set would be through the roof. Well, great. Now you're rich, but then those people who are thought process driven, they're not rich. Yeah. Well, what about this? Still what about the work in? Now you go to places and they don't even want to accept your cash. Like, they literally tell you, we yeah. don't take cash. Even though it states on its legal tender. Well, hold on a second now. <laughs> well, You're not taking cash. Why? Because it's got people's hands have touched it? Germs and that. You know. but okay, I don't see them wiping off the keypad. My credit card person person. has been in and out of thousands of machines over the past few months because nobody wants to take cash. And, oh, let's say I'm a, let's say that I really do just sort of go the way of, like, 
I'm just old school or just, new school. I'm like, I don't have cash and change in my pocket. But every time, you're pretty, pretty, again, list. let's talk about this phone. Let's talk about a credit card. Every time you use yeah, it, hey, every time you can take that phone and just go, yep. <clears throat> ding, ding. There you go. Hey, bloop, bloop. You can, and you it's know? convenient, and it's fun, and it's easy, and oh, when you do it, it's cool. But what happens when you don't really want to be found? Not because you've done something bad, but because you really want to get the hell away for a while. You could. You just need. You better not. You better not take your credit card. Well, you, you have don't to go cash. Don't take your phone. But what if places don't take cash? You're going to find yourself in like a community you out need in Alaska. A <laughs> prepaid Visa debit card. Like <laughs> card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like a prepaid burner phone, like I'm a fucking dealer. Yeah. No, I don't want that life. I just want to be able to say either I do want to sign up for the credit card thing and use it like that, like everybody else does, or I don't. And if I don't, I'm pretty sure that my constitution tells me that I should be able to. Yeah, but but anyway, it's you know, just not the norm of the way. Yeah, so it's not. So hard part. we're technology driven, you know. You, it, it, well, yeah, it, it's you can, like every twenty years. <laughs> oh, if yes. you look at it, it <laughs> yeah. and it's like every twenty years is just leaps and bounds of so much in technology and how much has changed. But how, dude? And we just came from building wooden wagons at the turn of the century. It just shows how fast Ooh. it changes. I mean, dude, we are moving. So, like in your shop, we are what, moving. Let's talk about CNC machine. Yeah. What's the coolest machines that is that like your coolest machine, or what's the coolest? Thing that you have, you think back when you're 13, picking up a welder, that well, didn't exist. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just, yeah, like the CNC program alone, just here it is. You can literally take a CAD computer drawing, stick it in this machine, throw a piece of metal in it, and it does it. I mean, and you I get think to it's watch cool it. to watch it's it. Amazing, it's amazing, dude. It's so much Never fun to it's watch. It's so it, satisfying. Like, it, it is. And it's, you should make those ASMR videos of like CNC. Yeah. People would probably watch it, dude. Oh, yeah, I, I love watching it's amazing. them on the, yeah. on the shows when they built them. I was like, I know. I was watching one of the videos of your, your newest of machine, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, I see all the cutouts, but I wonder where it's going to start. Yeah. And it's so cool to see where it starts, because it starts exactly where it has to, to make every cut, you know, exactly the way it's supposed to. Like, that's got to take so much planning and preparation to program that. It's interesting. It's it's one of those, it doesn't, but it does and it can get even <laughs> higher. It's it's more complex than I've even gotten into at this point. You know, it's yeah. I I've learned enough to be extremely dangerous and costly on this machine. Yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. But there's tons of people out there that just like Buddy Jordan. I mean, he started out with like two CNC machines over in his place in Ohio. Yeah. And now he's got like three shifts and twenty machines or something. Oh my gosh! Just, like, just and people that, going. Yeah, and it was literally. He started his business like the exact same time I did, like five years ago. Yeah, and it was just so like I love watching, but, but he's also a machinist. He's got a background of running these. He knows how to program them. He knows how to go. Yeah. So it's like when I get a machine like that in my shop, I get this little bitty baby cheap one <laughs> compared. Yeah. To you know these hundred thousand dollar machines and so forth. And right, I mean, but you got to get one to learn it and that's earn it. Right. right? You that's gotta, exactly you what it. I got. It. It's like yeah. I can afford this one right now, and I can afford to screw up on it because it's not as costly to screw up on it. So yeah, dude, that's what I'm going with. And, totally, man. And it's like we're just growing and expanding in so many things. I got a dyno. Here it is. I'm paying for. I think the thing was like sixty some thousand dollars or seventy something. I'm paying on. It. I don't even have it yet. Yeah, and, you know, and that's like talking about like hills and mountains. It's like I need this piece of equipment to make more videos and to prove my products in person. Yada yada yada. And it's like I'm just making this monthly payment and just waiting, sitting here. Yeah, dude. So it's like that's like the hardest thing because you're like sitting at a point. You know where this is gonna take you, mm-hmm. but you have to sit and wait for it. Yeah, but you can't dwell on it. Right. You can't force it, it, right? Yeah. It's like in, it, in today's times with COVID and everything else, everything's delayed as it is. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I, I bought something that's built to order. I'm a build to order company, too. And it's like, yeah, I'm impatient like the next person because we live in a society of Amazon and eBay and so I did many that. things. I emailed know? the company. I'm it, like, hey, I haven't heard it, anything in order. And they're like, it's coming from the east. I'm like, hey, if you, you know, yeah. sorry, if you, you may not know when we had huge power outages. Oh, mm-hmm. no worries. I had no idea where it was being shipped from, but I'm like, just wanted to check. I hadn't heard anything on it, but yeah. hey, thank you for getting back to me. No worries. Yeah. yeah. And um, usually most people that email me, 90% of them are very, very understanding. And it's like one week out and they email me like, hey, I ordered this a week ago. It says waiting shipment still. Well, it's in powder coat. And powder coat 
is only done so many times during the right. day. And yeah, you powder coat on so, Wednesdays at four o'clock. Yeah, that's pretty that. much. So that's right. But I, I also sure. list I yeah. list on there. You know, it's like powder coating options can literally take three weeks sometimes, depending on what it is. Because if we don't have it in stock, because there's five thousand colors out there, there's five thousand plus colors out there. Totally, you, the colors something. that you had, I don't know what, what all the parts you had hanging. But it's insane. Yeah. It's like fucking like Skittles rainbow. I know, dude. Holy yep. shit. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a pretty good powder coater back yeah, there. Nick and I'm is, like, yeah, Nick like, is damn. totally awesome. I mean, yeah. I love Nick to death, and that's somebody else who needs to come in here. He, he'd talk about Totally, yeah. yeah. He's yeah, wonderful he is, at his skill. He is. I think powder coating is so cool. It, what it powder is. coating is one thing. You should see his airbrush work. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. his airbrush work and his I've seen tidbits. Paint work. Oh, yeah, I've seen tidbits. He is so phenomenal. I know. I, just, I look up to him. That's also another person I've like, yeah, I, I, I wanted this American dream of running my own business and everything else, and I figured out it's tough. Yeah. And I don't think it's everything I want. Right. So, so like, let's go work with someone yeah. else. And so, but he still comes in. He comes in at nights for me and takes care of all my powder coat. I just, I do all the bitch prep work for him and get it all prepped. So that way he just spray, oven, go, get back to your family. Nice, so, man. Yeah. We set up a whole entire better deal on it all. So it's a lot less stress on his end. Good. And it's, I'm used to it. I, just bathe in stress and, and right. I do a really good job with it. I got really good broad shoulders. So, sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, so like <laughs> keeping up with it. inventory on stuff and then keeping up with the customers on both my end or if I bring other stuff in, it's like, I can handle all that. So, yeah. Yeah. So if I just make like, if I can give somebody a task that make it as minimalistic as possible, less stress, they're yeah. going to do a way better job at it. And, and, and like, he just does a phenomenal well, so job. Any, yeah. If you can, Ease the, the road a little bit of somebody else that you're working with. Yeah, you get better product in the end or performance. Totally, or man. Results. Yeah. yeah, totally. So what do you think's been, I mean, either personnel or um, or statewide with the regulations or nationally, I guess, what's been the largest or the biggest thorn in your side that you're still trying to overcome? The ups and downs, to be honest. It's yeah. just I, I look for a plateau. I would love just hit a plateau. Right. And be like, if it you make a hundred dollars a month every single month, oh, thank God. I, I at least know what I'm gonna make every single month. Yeah. And especially with COVID and it's like I'm still waiting on stuff from mm, I think we're finally in March. Wow. Yeah, there's still products I'm waiting on that I bought, raw material I bought right back all the way then. Still yeah. not showed up. And, yeah. and that's just a constant struggle because so many places are closed down. There is, you know, all that going on, manufacturing yeah. and so forth. So that's my biggest power struggle. So I'm just like trying to inch away for the rest of this year, um, missing out on all the events, all the events closing down. Right, right. I mean, that's. Yeah, no SEMA, no nothing. Yeah, right? it, that's that's the hardest. I'm, I'm at least happy that um, Shide is still going on at the end of this month. So I'm going to that. And what so, is that? Uh, Shide Diesel Extravaganza, otherwise SDX. Mm -hmm. So, um a lot of diesel races, gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Tractor pulls, cool. stuff like that. And Very it's cool, over man. Indiana, and it's always been a fun event. Usually, it's always in Terre Haute, but now it's going up to oh, Jeremy Wagler's place up north. I can't think of the town. It's what, like seventy five Indiana. Yeah, it's still okay. in Indiana. So it's a town of like seventy five Amish people. <laughs> it's yeah, my are, first. Are time. they pulling the trucks? <laughs> yeah. It's it's going to be my first time out there, sure, so sure. so it's going right. to be very interesting. Uh, It'll be cool, man. So I'm looking guys, forward to that. Do you have anybody running a one of any of your product there that you know of for sure? Yeah, uh, a couple of racers are running some of my products. Uh, nice. um, I'm actually leaving tomorrow morning at like 3 a.m. to go to Indiana to go to uh, one of my buddy Ethan. So uh, work on his race truck and do okay. a lot of the pipe work on there and do nice. some of the custom stuff. Um, don't really make a whole lot of that high end race products for these guys, to be honest. Sure. But, no, I understand. But some of the stuff that I do have the capabilities of making and stuff, I build directly onto their vehicles and Oh give sure, them, yeah. Give them the best edge or at least a better looking something flashy, you know. Yeah, yeah. So something that draws an eye or a, a good run. Yeah. Yeah. Because like yeah. we we've done some titanium work on a couple of race trucks and done carbon fiber work and aluminum work and then just some weird one-off parts that nobody else has made. And it's like, Hey, I got this idea. Yeah, we could do that. So, so, so let me ask you then, um, if you were to only be able to make parts for one vehicle ever, I'd be out of business. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you think that running yourself into a niche like that would cause you to, to go out of business? I, I asked because I know a company up in Chicago that went from making only for a certain vehicle mm -hmm. to making for like every, every kind. Vehicle. And now they're like, they're all over the world. Like that's what they had to do. Yeah. And that's it. Like I said, I started out with those eco diesels mm -hmm. and they discontinued them. Well, technically in a sure, way yeah they did and they didn't they got rid of them for a hot minute and they're back and but they're redesigned so none of my stuff's going to work on it right um then the nissan titan xds I'm the go-to guy for them yeah you're very, very nobody, well first nobody right? and yeah i was the first to do everything the first to build the parts for them first to bring the highest horsepower the first to drag racing first to everything you can think about yeah, it yeah and i love that platform well, it's gone, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. out the window. So sure. Uh, what do I got? If I didn't try to make parts for any other vehicles, then where would I be? Totally. I'd be yeah. out of business. But are you, you only know? sticking a diesel? No, I'm that's one. Oh, thing. you do gas and yep. diesel. Yeah. Nice. I've, that's good I've to know. Always, I've always done gas vehicles, but I never really made a product line because I can never figure out what is a good market for that. Sure. And the gas world has so many, so many different companies. Totally. Yeah. Uh, stuff that you find that is mid end or even high end is still kind of cheap. And then there's just really expensive and it's like, right. where do I fall? Cause my products are usually considered more on the higher end of scales. Right. You know, I work with titanium. I work with uh good stainless. Right. And right. Good aluminum. That's not cheap stuff to begin yeah. with. So it's yeah. like, well, your products, can you be? they speak for themselves. Even if you don't know exactly what they're used for, you can see the quality. Yeah. And, and, and that's where like, said getting a dyno because in the gas world if i can show you i can build an exhaust system which doesn't have any real regulations by epa and stuff in the gas market right and it's like here you go here's a ford f-150 sure eco boost the, the turbo so back far, exhaust yeah, yeah yeah turbo yeah. back exhaust 500 600 thousand dollars and you could throw one on it sounds better than it does from factory and if i could throw it on the dyno and go we picked up two horsepower in the gas world they're like two horsepower that yeah hi <laughs> yeah here's all my money so yeah yeah it, per dollar horsepower in the gas mm. world is so expensive yeah like you literally have to spend thousands to make a few extra horsepower mm. like yeah. real and that's what i like about diesels i just love the torque i love the sound i love, love yeah. the power that you get out of them but in yeah. today's time doing race competitive stuff it's just buku unfortunately yeah if people that's don't cool. like you talking yeah, yeah, about I get it, it yeah but i understand that's a it's a touchy market especially because the epa plays such a huge role in it as do the states yeah. and whatnot i get it i used to run not diesels but fairly yeah. quick vehicles that i wrenched on and you know uh it's um it's one of those things where you'll pay out the ear for it if you want it yeah it's it's all that's how cars are. Well, yeah, if you want to make it go fast, and somebody sells an eight thousand dollar, think of this souped up piece, cars. You get it. The difference mm -hmm. in price. Yeah, dude, it's unreal to me now. You can go pick up one of those new vets. I want one. C8. Oh my god! I want everything, dude. We got to check it out at the Corvette Museum in Indiana a few months ago, and it looks like something right out of Italy. Oh, it, it might as well be a damn Ferrari when you look at it. It pretty much is like a hybrid in between it's mid engine and everything else. Yeah, dude. I've already cool. seen one of the companies they twin turbo did. It's like a I'm, thousand I, horsepower out of it already. It's one of those things where I don't really want for much regarding like vehicles or a home anymore. Like I'm more about just the time and where I'm at. But that vet, yeah, <laughs> that vet, <laughs> it does something to my insides. <laughs> yeah, just get that, and you're just gonna live in there. <laughs> yeah, don't get a shuttle. Don't get an ambulance. Ten accessories for this, <laughs> or, dude. <laughs> Can I get a rooftop tent on my vet? Yeah. Right. I've been, yeah. yeah. One thing I've been lucky at is like, I always want stuff, but I never get anything unless it brings me back money. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I could buy this, but I could get the CNC. Yeah. Well, I could buy this, but I could get this in material. It's a great, start, yeah, but yeah, it's a great way to look at it. It's a up, way that you're you giving know? back to the people who supported you. So, you're looking at your customers and, and, yeah. and the it's like, people versus most people you know, live for the once. And I kind of did like a post on that. I went through Monday, like all of my clothes. I had a little pile going. And I'm like, you know what? Screw it. We're cleaning my daughter's room out. Cause since we're going to do the homeschool thing, we're trying to make a little spot in her room. Right. So I went through all my stuff. I probably got rid of a third of my clothes. I saw the more. bags, dude. It looks like I a whole had, closet. I got four plus trash bags. And then I went to our, like our old dresser in the basement and that, and we got how many bags of stuff in the basement. And I was like, right. And I'm going to go through it again because I was like, I'll do it when I got another fresh mind of cleaning and just yes. going through. But it's like, you know, 
you see that as like, okay, I can do it for other people, but all this stuff too, there's things I want, you know, I've been looking at new vehicles. Do I really need it? No. Looking at, I've been looking at gladiators. <laughs> the gladiators the Bronco, got you, dude. Uh, all the window shopping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look at the it, new right? I mean, Sierras because I was like, man. We're all stuck at home anyways. What yeah, else like, are you going to end up doing? Yeah, you, you do that and it's just like, but I've come, I think, more this past year, like telling Jeremy this like past like full year, like calendar year. And so like big growth of like, oh yeah, man, really, I don't need that shit. Like really coming down like, yeah, right. I bought myself a few things that I've been wanting and I've been able to do it. Because certain things wouldn't have been made anymore and stuff like that. Got some, you know, cool guns and stuff, but it's like, whatever. But it's just those things of like, oh, cool. Like, I see stuff like, yeah, the other day I was on eBay. Oh, that's really cool. Man. And I'm like, yeah. And it sits in that cart and it's like, oh, you lost something? And yeah. just, it has been there for like months. But, yeah, you see it that same way too. Is like, okay, I'd rather get something cool for the shop or better, you know, material or something cool so I can do something and, yeah make somebody else's dream or want become a reality. And I think more people need to kind of do that. If you could provide more of a want for somebody else, I think you'd really have a lot more in life to offer and better because you sit there and you always want, want, want. Well, what are you giving back if you're spending all your wants? Yeah. You're not giving anybody else any of theirs. That's, you know, you're absolutely right. And, and that's something that you have to, again, the, the, what, going all the way back to the first word we said here was balance. Yeah. Yeah. You have to find a balance inside of you you have to find a balance outside of you how do you balance your crazy shit that we've been talking about that is constantly going on whether it's in your head or around you with your family i smoke a lot of weed at night so do i <laughs> so do i i knew we liked each other for a reason but no, uh, no, no that... the reality uh i'm not the person to ask uh i haven't figured it out more than anybody else has uh but you you work on it you have to. yeah well i think that's going to be Ever changing. I think that's the the balance is always ever changing, and it's like it, here at this moment, I'm not as busy, and so I can spend more time putting my focuses on what I have at hand here, here, and here, and then get out early enough and spend more time with the wife and the kids and so forth. Uh, especially mine's a school teacher, so she's going back to school now and having that's to deal with that. Headache. All so sorts of like, other new stresses. So it's like, well, we had that extended. And well, it's pretty much been extended off work for a long time. So it's been really nice to spend that much more time with her. And it's like, I'm not going to any events because all the events got canceled. So home life and everything, it's like I said, it's ever changing. It's ever evolving. So you're always going to have to take what today is bringing you and try to figure out what your balances are going to do, which goes back to what I said, like you, you got to live in a moment. You can plan for the future to an extent. Yep. I yeah, don't try yeah. to make any plans, anything past 30 days. And even then, I'm very skeptical about making plans past 30 days. Yeah, we had so hard. many camping trips. We had camping trips with a lot of my friends from out of town that we do at least once to twice to sometimes three times a year. We've canceled every single one. We've had to because either campgrounds have canceled them or the events that we we're going to go to at the campgrounds canceled. And then it was just like, hey, hey guys, as much as we want to see you from all the way down in Georgia and you from all the way over in New York and stuff like this, it – we're kind of being taught right now. Like a lot of people's hands are kind of getting tied. So it's like, right. It feels that way. So what are you going to do? You can't really bitch and complain about it because that's not going to get you anywhere. So you're just going to take the time for the moment and go, you know what? This is what I could at least do today. You know what? I ain't going to see my friend from New York, Yeah, but I can call him. Yeah. I can FaceTime him. Maybe, you know what? I got all this work in front of me. Let me get some of this done and I'm going to get, send him a text. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's it's ever evolving trying to find a balance. Yeah. You, you got to do what's going to make you happy. You really can't really worry too much about other people's happiness, but you had to have a consideration, especially the ones that are close to you. Yeah. Let it be your yeah. wife, your children and so forth like that. So you, you got to figure out on a daily basis of the balance. And that's what I do. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's like. I've stayed up late. You stayed up late. And we've all stayed up late. And it's like, oh, look, we've been up for two days just wagging away at something that needs to get done. And then you're just dead for two more days. And you're like, why did I do that? Yeah. Went yeah. back. What do you look what Stop it doing that. Yeah. It's like yeah. you accomplished a lot, but it screwed up your sleep. It screwed, screwed up your up balance. Everything else yeah. that's balanced you out. And now you're going to take a couple of days to reset that. So, yeah, you know, there's times I get stupid hyper-focused and then it's like, 
I'm going to be in the office. I'm going to do this. Or I got all this marketing and editing to got to do. And then at a point, it's like, usually I try to tell myself after like a certain time, 10 o'clock, cut it off. We're done. We got to yeah. be done. Yeah. Night, so it's like exactly done. Like Jim. Oh, Sitting yeah, dude. Working on stuff. Jim Harper. Yeah, and then he'd be in bed and he's like, oh, I got to get up and do it. And I, I've yeah. been that way too before with something like small. I'm like, oh, I need to get that. And you hop up and do it real quick. And it's just like, dude. And then you're like, I have to keep a notepad right next to the bed with a pen because I am up no less than two to four times a, an evening, maybe not before I fall asleep, but I have to like, oh, just something, boom, come in my head. I got to write this down. If I don't write it down, I'm going to lose it. You oh, know, that's... and it, it could be anything. It could be something I need. It could be. Um, an idea for a story. It could be an idea for a podcast. It could be an idea for my company. It could be like, oh shit, Joshua mentioned that I needed to do this. I got to call him and talk about this. Yeah. If I don't have that there, yep. for some reason, when my body starts to relax, my mind finally starts to be like, oh, well, that's now all the things you haven't been worried about. The senses are, they are, that's, are aware. That's how it is it's, for me. Yeah. It, whenever I'm by myself yes. is the worst time I hate being by myself. It's but but I, see, I sort of like that part, that point where you're like, oh my God, I just thought of this. Oh, wow, I got that. But as long as I write them down, I'm doing myself a, a service by not focusing on them in, in the now because it's too much, mm -hmm. too much. And I think that's what you mean. Yeah. It fucking freaks you out after a while. But if I didn't have those moments, then I wouldn't have a lot of the creativity or the things that I've made because they came exactly. in those moments. Yeah. Yeah. And if I try to dull those senses via alcohol or cannabis or medication, it, I'm not as creative. I'm not as fun. I'm not as happy. So I'm trying to get less of those other things, even if it is smoking less cannabis at night, just so maybe I can get more of my natural creative flow. I just got to learn how to slow myself down before I sit my ass in bed. Yeah. You know, that's that's my thing with it. It's, I say it's a routine, a process of... Doing that, but like you said, as soon as you start to relax the body, the mind will go nuts because it's not worried about anything else now. Yeah, dude, it's like the one time it's natural impulses to fire for foot, walk, this, dude, Ooh, fight man. or flight all day. Oh, yeah, my, all, all day, right? Aren't, yep. And then all of a sudden, your body can be in that state if you can relax enough to get your mind to do that. Like, you know, like this morning, meditating, like sitting there, my brain going nuts. First thing I did, I hadn't even been up 10 minutes and psh, sit in the couch, get in my position, and yeah. away we roll. And it's just like brains, you know, waves like psh, everything's going nuts. And it's just like you finally get it to calm, but it's like your brain's just fired because you just woke up. But it's just like stop for a moment. Yeah. But it's just as bad at night. Yeah. You know, but that's it's part of the balance of, you know, trying to get, you know, the full thing, like that thing I sent <laughs> you of, that that whole balance of, you know, that little uh, image I sent you was, was it, uh, the body, the mind, and whatever. That oh, earth. Was, yeah, it was earth. body, mind, and earth. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't remember. I was like, I saw it again, too, before. But having that balance between those three things, like, yeah, like, your body's got to be in balance with your mind mm -hmm. because typically if your mind's not in balance, you ain't going to accomplish shit with your body. And you got to be somewhat in tune with earth, you know, the nature around you, because if not, it will always revolt against you. you know? yeah. Other nature will win every time. That's, that's yep. how it works. But having those things all come, and it's just the balance, I think, that, Many people and you guys like with business wise is finding that like, okay, I got to stop. Like I got to do this. Yeah. Got to step away. Cause then quality will falter. Mood changes, attitude changes. Yeah, dude. You everything. change because you're so ingrained in what you're doing that you're somewhat dude, self poisoned. You, you start yourself. to lash out at people too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, like if you, if you put yourself in that position, you will force yourself out and it won't be pretty. Yeah. It, tomorrow's going to be there. And and if tomorrow's not going to be there anymore, it's there. It's it, for all then, of us. <laughs> then, then, I mean, you just you never know. You could slip in the shower and it'd be it for you. So yeah. the like, <laughs> yeah, stop. Yeah, <laughs> think. Yeah, you know, be as good as you can to everybody else around you and what you can do in front of you. And then tomorrow's there. Go back at it. And no truer words, man. No. Those are those are wonderful words to it, live by. It really, that's. I mean, I get manic sometimes still. Yeah, Tara would be like. I'm here to tell you. And I'm like, shut up. Don't care. <laughs> it's hard then, to listen then, when you're in that zone. Yeah. And then you start chipping away at it and you're like, hey, huh? and I'm like, no, not right now. Hold on. And then next thing you know, a couple hours go by and then it's like, she's in bed. Go up there. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. It's a couple. It's Dude, late. But, you know, you start know. with the smaller things, man. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, we've talked before. He jokes about it because sometimes I'll just throw that clicker board. But sometimes it's like I can't mess with even sitting it here longer than two seconds because I know if I do – It'll be six minutes. Yeah. And then it'll be an hour. And then I'm like fucking three hours in going, 
what have I been doing? You know, so I'm getting better at realizing like if Tara or with my wife or somebody was to say, hey, flick you on the ear. Now I'm able to go, oh, shit, am I doing that thing? Am I just only focusing on one thing? Am I being hypercritical and hyper-focused? That's not healthy. Yeah, I shouldn't do that. I still need that help. I still need that I, flick on the I ear. Think everybody does because yeah. you're all going to get in that in that mood of doing it. Like I was painting stuff in my daughter's room last night, and it's just like, okay, it's eight o'clock. I'm gonna stop. Yeah, like because if not, I literally would have you would have finished at midnight I or gone in the there yeah. until you know they came in, you know, to, to get our daughter to sleep. And I, I would have, if I could possibly, I would have painted because I've done that before, gotten a rhythm, and it's like doing this, this, and this. You're like, oh shit, dude, it's fucking two, three in the morning, like. Moderation that we all fail in. Yeah, you don't pay attention to the time because you're so driven and focused, and it's just like you get in that zone, but then it's like you do need someone to, hey, you can do that tomorrow. It's fine. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. You you need somebody always to kind of have those reins because I think that's good of of balance, again, of life, of always having somebody in your corner or your circle that can tug on you when you're, you're going a little bit further than you're capable of at that moment. Right, right, right. Yeah. Very, very poignant again. Um, I, you know, we've been going now for an hour and 20, almost working on 22 minutes, which is pretty fucking cool. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. even feel like it's been 30 minutes. You're going to turn it into a JRE before you know it. It'll be three, four hours long. We're right. Gonna start doing other We're things. We're going to have to get carry out, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have somebody deliver some food. Can I, I'm going to ask you a, another question about your career. Um, currently, it's, it's being aired. There's a, a, there's a series that you've been a part of, a uh, television oh. series, a YouTube series. Yeah. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that and what you guys or what you're playing a role in in that? Oh. Because if uh, I say it, it's going to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin Tez. I, I love the man to death. He, he, he was an idol growing up. They were yeah. watching trucks back in the day on, like, Spike TV and everything, yeah, watching yeah. Kevin uh, and Ian Johnson from Big Tire Garage. Uh, yeah, just that's what's – really interesting about this journey that I've had is like I've met so many people that I've looked up to and watched on TV but yeah, yeah he's got a TV series it's called Hands on Cars with Kevin Tez uh, you can find him both on Facebook he's got a YouTube channel of it and it's on Amazon Prime oh so, nice. nice so he's got yeah, cool. first season that he did uh, Jaguar uh, heard a lot of Jaguar enthusiasts of the stuff that he did and it's a really cool project but the second one is he did a C10 pickup truck, Ooh. and he put a 5.0 Cummins motor that's in the Nissan XDs into it with the transmission, and then uh, he reached out to me and came out and helped him do, uh, we did a turbo swap on it and did yep. all the pipe work and stuff and get it up to, you know, 600 horsepower, helped out with all the electrical and tuning and so forth on it all, that's get amazing. it all put together. But, yeah, he just, uh, episode four, if you want to watch my big old, self on there <laughs> it's so it's like Just, season two yeah. or whatever yeah, it's on season two for the uh okay. the c10 truck it's and what's Project what's the name of the actual show hands on cars with kevin tez hands on okay. cars with kevin tez all right you heard it here yep. youtube facebook or amazon prime yeah. right that's awesome man that's, episode that's four we get to actually see you on there huh? yeah yep so how was that whenever kevin reached out to you man like as a big fan that must have been incredible <laughs> yeah. like you want to talk about being an asshole um so what happened was I was in my old shop in Collinsville, uh-huh. and I was at that point where the XD stuff was really taken off and hundreds of phone calls every day, emails, just how do I get these parts, What tell right. me more info about it, and I just couldn't handle it. Yeah, it's a so, lot, right? So, and, and somebody really close to me actually told me, it was kind of like a big influencer celebrity, mm-hmm. it was sure. like, unfortunately, you got to hit the reset button, every person you see. It, you can't take off on a person that says, hey, man, I looked up to you or uh, I wanted to talk to you or say I, blah, 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 and then another one does it and another one does it. So you got to hit the same thing with customers, and I'm trying to get better at it. Oh, and like so, it's a fresh start yeah, every you interaction. To, you, every interaction, you almost got to hit a reset button it's because wonderful. you can't take the hundreds of other people that have said the same thing to you. Yeah. It, it, it will just wear you out. And it wore you me start out. to become a little crass or jaded, so, right? Like, yeah. Jesus, if I hear this become again. Exactly. Actor of just, yeah, you, you know, become an actor thing. in your own life, yeah. just you, like you Jeff re- says. Yeah. You really do. Mm-hmm. And I never thought I would ever be in that position. Like, I wanted to be rich and famous. Well, how about you get rich first, and then you could work on the famous later? And it's like, well, we went ass backwards on that. So. The, 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 <laughs> the, famous, the fame comes after you've yeah. worked 
for so, fucking years tirelessly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, <laughs> and here's the thing. So uh, he, he reached out to me. I just got done being at a diesel event. It was a big, huge, it's kind of like one of the Super Bowl diesel events, the ultimate call-out challenge. And I got to meet LT Tolman, who's the guy who actually runs a truck show now. Right. And became good friends with him, talked with him. And uh, he gave my information over to Kevin because he. Oh, kept sure. Them two still Perfect talk opportunity. All the time. And yes. Kevin's been trying to get a hold of me for like weeks. Oh, no. And had no clue. So. Oh, no. Uh, it, people that email direct through my website, for some reason, I never get them half the time. They Mine's the same way, dude. I've been trying to fix it for five years. So I tell everybody info at cftperformance.com, email me direct. Don't use the link on the website. Right. So finally, he called me and. It's like, man, this voice sounds familiar. And he's going all off about this truck and this project. And I'm like. <laughs> just another crazy customer, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm just like <laughs> sitting there. I'm in the middle of welding. And I'm trying to fulfill orders. And I'm trying to do all this other stuff. And I'm just like, just get to the point here, guy. You yeah, know? Yeah. And, and he said his name. And it didn't quite click on me. And he, really? Kevin talks fast. Yeah, yeah. They, whenever he's excited, he talks real fast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he was going all off about it. I was like, email me. Use this email, email me the information, and I'll see what I can do to help you out with your build. So 15 minutes after the phone gets off, I get notification on the phone, the email pops up, and I start reading through everything he's got to say. He's got the rendering of the truck and all this other stuff. Oh, and he's I, serious. Yeah, yeah. And, and I saw the little signature with his photo and his name, and I was like, mm, I'm going to call him back. Yeah, you and, think? And I was like... <laughs> Hey, I know I was short with you, and I this shouldn't never change, no matter who you are, right. and I apologize for that. Right. But you're not the first time I heard, like, this weird project, and it was just, so I apologize to him. And then I should always go back and try to apologize to all my customers I do it to, too, I get sure. short with. Yeah. And I try and do better, human. But, hey, man. Yeah, yeah that was. Sometimes. That yeah. was really interesting. That was, uh. Two people that have watched on TV for years on years, and here I get to go out to his place, do this truck project. Been out there half a dozen times or so now. Yeah, just going back and forth, doing all the fixings and so forth. So uh, next time he he calls, you'll pick up and yeah, you talk yeah, to him. Yeah, <laughs> got his number saved. Yeah, I got a, I got all the numbers saved this time. <laughs> dude, <laughs> I've been there, bro. I've yeah. been there, and I've had like people like Jordan come to me and like, dude, what are you what are you doing? Like, you got somebody here that really wants to do something cool with you. And I'm like, fuck, I'm trying to finish this. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I get to that? Even though I know it's important, I got to finish this. Because if I don't finish this, there will be none of that. Yeah. And that's that balance that is is hard to find. That's why it says, like, I've been trying to tell myself, you got to hit that reset button every single time. Someone calls and interrupts you. Like, you could ask everybody that works in the shop or in the shop with me, and my phone goes off. I'm like, fuck. I just start screaming, "Hey, CFD performance, how you doing?" Yeah, yeah. dude. It's, it, it, well, you've 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 already given us the name for the podcast. That's for sure for the episode. I mean, resetting and balance, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's it, it, those two things right there. I mean, if anybody takes anything from this, just hit that reset button yeah. before you do something, before you pick up the phone, before you start the day, before you you react to your kid because they're being a complete nincompoop, and you want to tell them to get the hell away from you. But hold on now. Yeah, like, you just stubbed your toe too. So what's really making you angry here? Yeah, right. No, and it's 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 completely like you said. It's a reset and balance, like the you know industry I used to be in. I'd be on the phone nonstop, you know, dealing with people, helping people, and it's like it took me a while too. Like if you don't separate each one of those people, you become very manic, and it just f- overflows, and you don't see a break. It literally just feels like, what the hell did I just do the past? You know. Yeah. Eight, nine, ten hours of my work day. Yeah. It flows into that and it's like, okay, stop. <sighs> Breath. Okay, next one or whomever. That's a hard thing to do. Like yeah. it really is. No matter yeah, who that's you the are, whole like, like letting yesterday shape today. It's the same thing letting last minute shape this minute. Yeah. Right? It's the same things that you that you say all the time. It's if you're not doing something for right now, then what are you doing it for? Because if you say it's because of, oh, well, you know, I grew up this way and that, that's, I always hung my hat on that. Like, oh, I had a shitty upbringing, this and that. So anything I do is going to be good. Mm-hmm. Like that's yeah. that feeling. That's that projection that I was throwing out there. It's not really fair to anybody else or to yourself. You just have to reset constantly. Find a way to say, dude, that has nothing to do with this. 
it's like I said, everybody has a past story. It, it, they could be great. They could be sad. It, it, it could be struggles. There could be so many things. And none of that really matters right now. Doesn't. It, 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 whatever, like if somebody calls you with an issue or somebody interacts with you, you can just tell us having a bad day. You just need to try to be the best you can. Like I said. Be recently, present. It, yes. it, it yeah. Just like, even if you get in an argument, it's, you know, we all bicker. We all argue. And one of the things like Tara and I always worked on, it's like, we'll start getting heated and hot. And I just shut down. Yeah. I will walk away. I try my best to walk away. I'm like, shh, 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 shh. done, done. We're not talking about it. Just stop. But does that make both, her like skyrocket? Well, it makes both of us skyrocket. But that's the whole entire thing. We're already getting to that boiling point. It's like, shh, shh, shh. whoa, hold on. Let's just stop. I think you walk away. And, it, you, and you, we heat, just need to stop you, and, and let, let it, it just smolder for yeah, a second. And we can it. we can come back to it in like an hour or so. Right. If it's know? that important, we yeah. will discuss it. Yeah, we will discuss it. But huh. I'm getting hot. You're getting hot. I'm getting loud. You're getting loud. And this is like. You don't have to do it if you're a significant other. This could be your best anybody, friend. Anybody, yeah. This yeah. is yeah. anybody. It's like when you start hearing it getting high, you're like, hold on. Yeah, like back whoa, up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, right, right. Take a breath. Right. Take a breath. Let's think about something else. Hey, let's just not talk to each other. Let's not look at each other for a hot minute. Back off. Because guess what? You're going to come back at a way different different perspective. Oh, absolutely. Especially yeah. if you're in the wrong or you're in the right. Or you're both in the right, but it's still a wrong. You yeah, know? Yeah. It, it's one of those, <clears throat> all right. Now we're calm down. Yeah. You know, let's think about this. Yeah. What's going to make most logical sense of fixing this situation at this moment, at this time? Yeah. That's a wonderful, wonderful way to look at it, man. I think that <clears throat> it definitely takes two people to both be on board to say like, hey, if I tell you that I don't want to talk about this anymore, you can't take it personally. You have to be like, oh, he's trying to, we're trying to squash this. Or maybe take a step back, analyze it. We'll come back and discuss. Totally, it. no matter how you look at it, you've yeah. got to be okay with it. Like one person can't say, "Well, I'm to done." Be more verbal and say, "Hey, not right now. Let's take a step back. Let's talk about it." Yeah, I gotta I like process that. what. Yeah, and, and in today's it's time, idea. it's the hardest yeah. thing to do. It is, and it's a yeah. concept that never gets talked about or never. It, it, when you get in locked right. in an yeah. argument, what are you gonna do? You just want to keep on arguing. Go, go. You know, yeah. and people like us, we're hard headed. Well, people, find we're, that we're the, very the quick way to. You know? Swift to make the cut too. Yeah, yeah. To make the pain of dropping somebody down a peg or two, it's like, all right. Yeah. You get into I a know mindset. You, I know like, what I'm going to say. What I'm going to do to exactly, cool, to belittle you down, and and especially if you know somebody, if it's yeah. somebody you really don't know, it's just going to be you know bullshit. Oh, bullshit. You'll start. Yeah. You'll be like you saw it at the knees, mother. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah like yeah. you'll start. It, go it was, at it. You'll that's go insults, and that's do. where you need to stop. You need once it gets to the point where you're about ready to belittle someone or even get point you almost want to physically harm someone you yes know? yes and, and it's just like i'm gonna punch this wall no yeah, it's, i don't yeah. want to because i, I so suck at that. doing yeah. drywall so i don't want to punch it <laughs> right it, I, i've done it enough i got enough reminders in my house so it's like no yeah. we can't, can't do get we can't get to that point anymore. it's amazing what youth yeah. and immaturity will do to us yeah you know that's in the heavy bag people <laughs> I, I, that I, is too I, far I need to utilize some of your mentorship abilities and find me a good bag for the garage yeah yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> I need something, man. It's <laughs> getting me crazy. Um, but yeah, dude. So okay, so resetting and balance. Finding a balance between whatever it is, family, life, work, mind, body, earth, right? Yep. Whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, and finding the ability to reset uh, in times whether you're a business owner or not. There's gonna be plenty of times throughout the day where you get the opportunity to test yourself or be tested by your world, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess that's that's when you start to realize what you're made of whenever you can remember to reset, when you can remember that you're out of balance, when you can remember, and it's hard, right? Like none yeah. of us can do it just like that. It's you, But you have to start using tools, whether it's meditation, like we talk about a lot here, or breathing. just the tools like you mentioned, yeah. right? Yeah, the breathing, like what Jeff talks yeah. about a lot, or like what you talk about, just common sense, Hey, I love you, and I don't want to get to this point where I'm at right now. It doesn't have to be a spouse, like you said. It could be yeah. a, just a friend, a loved one, somebody you care about. But hey, listen, we're both starting to act real ignorant here. Someone and you bump into at Walmart. It goes on you know, every day in society, and it's just exactly yes. like you're saying. Well, just well, I've I've gotten really well, good at being able to like out in in public. Out and about, dude, I'm the happiest son of a bitch you ever met. I can spread my love and my positivity just standing in a line at a checkout. I've had it happen. I know how it works. It's easy. Oh, yeah. Just smile. But at, they can see it. at home, 
where you're surrounded by the people that know you and love you the best, that's when it's the hardest, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely the hardest to be able to say, I'm out of balance. I'm probably being an ass. You know, instead of just being like, you're fucking out of balance and you're being an asshole. Give me a moment type thing, you know. Well, now I am too. Well, it's because it's your loved ones. Your loved ones. You can project more onto the people that love and you love. Yeah. Because, I mean... It's just simple. Oh, hey. it, well, you know it, more about look, them. Yeah, it's right. you see They're them on a daily basis and everything not else. So a stranger that hits you at Walmart, well, yeah. what are the odds I ain't gonna see you, you again. Run, yeah, what are the odds of running into that individual again is slim. But if you can take that time, you know, with you know the people you see, and it's like, hey, let's back off, or I'm gonna go do this for a little bit. Let me go calm down, come back. Like, you know, on the weekends or like most days, I try to do meditation early morning, evening when families not up or, you know, whatever. But, like, all those moments, my wife goes, I'm going to go meditate. Okay, cool. You know, and then just let our daughter know. We'll go do something like, hey, mom's going to go do this. We'll let her have her time. Or, right, And right. it's, I think, a healthy balance, if at all possible, to let each individual in the household, even the kids, have that moment of, here, you do what you want to do for a little bit. Oh, you want to play, you know, like your son. Here he's sitting, Milo's out there playing video games. Cool. That's what you want to do for a little bit. Right, cool. right, yeah. Then maybe later, like, hey, you know, let's go, let's go get the boards out. Let's go skateboard. Or like yeah, yeah. my daughter, yeah, we'll go walk and she'll ride her bike. Like yep. finding those little things that you each can have your little moments as we all need, I believe. And then you do the things together, things apart. But it's, if you can find that balance of that, I think you can keep on I think that. That's right. That man. playing mm-hmm. field of everyone I, I, needs their <laughs> space. I don't care who you are. Yeah. You can't be just mixed into a group of people at all times. So yeah, well, I'm going to go, give me my 20 minutes here to meditate, breathe. Cool. I'm going to read or whatever. Okay, cool. Like today, my wife could have like yelled at me, get your ass off the floor. And I was like, but I was beat. Like yeah. <laughs> even when I got done training my morning people, she's like, are you tired? I'm like, oh, I'm exhausted. She goes, well, just sit down for a little bit. And I go, I got to go work out so I can sit. I'm going over to, you know, she already knew I was coming over here. I'm like, I got to yeah, yeah. sit in this. I'm like, now I'm going to go get my workout done. Cause if I don't do that, then I'm not going to get it done. So it's like push through that. But it's, it's those little balances of she today was like, Oh yeah, he needs that. So I'm gonna let him have that. And then yeah. before I left, she was downstairs working out. My daughter was upstairs on the iPad cause she knows where she'll go down, but she will leave my wife alone. Let's her work out. But we all can separate and yeah. then come together I think that's just a balance people need to see is like totally let your significant other, your kids, maybe they need that just a little bit of time. No different than you do at times. Let them have it. Then come back. Yeah, dude. I like it. I've always viewed my, um, my situation as a whole, I think more so in what I'm regarding, referring to as my family as a whole, two dogs, the daughter, the son, the wife, you know, the whole thing, the house. Yeah. I've viewed it all as one little biosphere and I think that I've always viewed it as, and, and this is nothing more than an admittance. This is and sort of hypothetical, but what I'm realizing just sitting here with you guys today talking about this is I should probably not view everything as a whole because it's made up of so many moving pieces. And if I can find balance with even one of those moving pieces, it might find me help, help me find balance in one of the other moving pieces. So that's what I take from our conversation today. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> thank you both because no, it's, yeah. it's well, a lot it's, of good insights. It's hard to view so. that that way. I've always been all or none. So it's like either the family and everything is good or it's all fucked. It's not like, oh, my relationship with my son is fantastic. My daughter, I can work on a little bit. My wife, oh, God, it's fucking horrible. No, it's it's all or none. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that here to, to be boastful or braggadocious. It's quite the opposite. I'm saying this so people understand it's okay to say it. And it's okay to be the person, the man out of the house that maybe hasn't been viewing things and acting the best that he could. But that's why we do this. This is why, this is why I bring people like you in so I can fucking learn something, man. Well, and we all learn from each other. All exactly. The time. Yeah. So like we're we're all moving gears. In the end, you're just another moving gear over like a big, huge Rolex watch or something. You know, right, it's, right. It, it's in a, gonna, a, big, a big NFW you know, watch. Yeah. Sorry, I got to throw out a plug <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, or Apple I, Watch. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Mine don't have yeah. gears. Right, but yeah, yeah. It, we're all just moving parts. <laughs> we're just particles. We're mass. We're, we're yeah. you know, that's never going to change. So, you know, how are you going to utilize your moving parts? What are you going to put that energy into? Life yeah, is dude. energy. So, yeah. it you can't control all of it. 
Right. So, but you can can't control it, but you can what is it? You can kind of dictate it. You so can sort kinda, of shape it, right? You can kind of shape guide it. You can it. kind of guide right. it, yeah. push it, and so forth. So well, it's like why? Yeah, so dude. Do it for the best. I mean, dude, there's a there's something there that you just reminded me of, like the banks of a river don't dictate the river's direction because the river constantly chips away at the banks mm-hmm. and it makes its own direction, right? Sure. Yeah. Unless you're the Army Corps of Engineers and you come in and you just blast everything. Yeah. But anyway, um, a goal of mine is to sort of be the banks, if you will, of my my family is the river, if you will. But I think that we all have to figure out that we're also the river. Yeah. You can't just be the banks. Like, you can't just be the shoulders and the... Uh, you got to be fluid. You got to be mobile because if that river is trying to go a certain way and you're preventing it, well, that's not going to work out. It's just going to yeah. chip away at you even more, right? So, without getting too metaphorical, I think that that's uh, if if you want to be those banks, I guess you have to understand that there's going to be other things down in that water than just what you want to be there. No, oh, yeah. But that doesn't make you stop helping the water move, right? The current will bring yeah. things you don't want. Well, I, I can fucking, <laughs> yeah. I'll make up shit like this all day if you let me, but that's, that's, I guess that's, I mean, for me, that's a good way for me to look at it. Uh, I've been around a lot of water lately on recent vacations and yeah. trips, you know, river. There's something about the the physical and the metaphysical or the metaphorical of a river or of moving water, right? It's, it's got a positive energy, even if it's just coming out of your faucet. That's it's right, dude. It's, it's something that's very powerful. There's something there, that water in your hands and going over your chest or whatever it's doing. Man, it got me thinking. It got me thinking I want to be out in it a lot more, you know? And uh, I think that can only help. Yeah. You know, but, man, this has been an amazing episode. Oh, yeah. This has been yeah. an amazing podcast. And it's so funny that sometimes you know that things are going to go a certain way, but when you just let them go, sometimes they can become so beautiful, you know, Let it so flow. perfect. Let it flow, baby. <laughs> Let it flow. Right. So, you know, I, I want to go ahead and try to wrap this up. <clears throat> and I, I just want to go back to something that we've talked about balance loosely. We've never really talked about resetting. We've talked about viewing things in a different light than you did yesterday, but some autistic people wear a rubber band, mm-hmm. right. And what it's for is to remind them, to bring them back to reality, that whatever they're looking at, whatever they're doing is temporary, just like this pain, right? Mm -hmm. Let's focus. Let's get back on it. And I think having the ability to do that, either with or without a physical reminder, is probably um, very crucial to our growth if we want to become the best version of ourselves, right? So thank you for putting it into that context, Josh. Absolutely. Like, seriously, man, these these are things that we love and cherish. And uh, I, I hope that our that our listeners and our viewers will will take what what you've brought to us and and learn with it, just like we hope that they do with our own words and ideas and whatnot. Um, you know, I'm going to continue to mess up every day, just like you said. When you mess up at work and you get a chance to go work on the thing you love again, that's just like me with our that's expressions awesome. and yeah. whatnot, right? And with Jeff and his craft, with the way that he works with people hand in hand every day, um, it, it it's it just makes it all a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. No and, doubt. You know, and so anyway, man, thank you for the for everything. Thank you for what you brought today. And I know that we could go on for another two hours. <laughs> but damn it, I'm trying to find a vehicle out there somewhere and I gotta go out and get to work. <laughs> but I got, uh, I got the river in my shop right now, so Oh yeah, you gotta get back to that. Yeah. But we had I know well, everybody's taking care of it back uh, there. So a hell of a couple of days of rain here. I mean, yeah. thank goodness we had one or two in between that were dry. But my yeah. gosh, man, we have just been getting hammered. Yeah, it's almost like when it rains over in the Middle East in some places for the first time. Oh, it just it just sits on top of the flood. ground, man. Yep. You know, I've been over there before in in Israel, and we had to use this big old jackhammer to create rivers throughout our tents, just so the water would channel away from our gear. You know, mm-hmm. it's like it was horrible. But anyway, I appreciate uh, everything. I appreciate being on here. Yeah, appreciate definitely. finally meeting Jeff. Yeah, oh, I know. I, yeah. I know that you've been following I, Jeff for a while. I, I've been creeper in the corner watching <laughs> you for years, all the way back in my He's MMA like days lurking. and everything. I was just like, mm, I like this guy. He's got something going on. Yeah, man. That's <laughs> something with Jeff, man. Whenever I met Jeff, it was the same mm-hmm. way. I was like, hey, this guy's sort of got a good thing going on. Yeah. Like, like it's the vibe that I sort of i am trying to get to, you know? Yep. And he's never wavered from that. Try well. I have my moments, it's like you said. You can't be there at all times, but trying to stick with what I've been taught, and you know, my years of martial arts, the things I read, trying to be as 
best a human as you can be. But again, we're all yeah. human at well, the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, grenades are solid before they become fragmented. Well, that's true. Yeah. So that's as long as you keep trying to stay solid and you don't become too fragmented, I guess you'll be okay. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. Well, there you go. Who knows, man? <laughs> Who knows? We'll just, we'll just put that on a t-shirt. Bunch I was going to say, I could see it. Yeah, it could be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on, man. Well, Joshua, thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate uh, everything you do for the community. Yeah. We appreciate that you're still keeping your head down, you're charging forward. Um, and we didn't really talk any about your, your service to the country, uh, but we would be remiss if we didn't say thank you for that. Absolutely. Um, and I know how that is because when people thank me, I'm like, yeah. but coming from one vet that's got a messed up head to another one that's got a little <laughs> bit of a messed up head. It's good to to have one of my own that can still help me crawl out of my head. Yeah. Right? Because I know we all need that, and you've been integral for me. So thank you for that. Always be there for you. Well, so. likewise, man, likewise. Whatever I can offer. I'm not sure what it is, but <laughs> I'll be there. Um, Jeff, thank you for being here again, hey, man. man. Appreciate it's you. It's always fun to be together. That's right. Well, there we go, guys. Episode 16 is in the books. And just like that, I think we've got a real podcast here. I think you're getting somewhere. I think if we just keep on down the track and stay balanced and reset, we'll be yeah. okay. We'll be yep. fine. That's right. Good. Well, hey, everybody, uh, thank you for listening or watching. Uh, if you're a first-timer, come back, subscribe, do whatever you got to do. Leave comments. Let us know what you think. That's we'll right. Love, we'd love to hear from you guys. So That's right. And we got some more, some more guests planned and coming up. Uh, and uh, we hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as we have. Uh, from the crew here, what more could you want? We thank you. We love you. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Cool. Take care. Yeah, peace.